Welcome back to another episode of Rock Dog. I'm drunk. Are you happy? We're, we're gonna do this shit. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, this is rare for me. Hi, I'm Jeff. Noel. This is Jeff. Nice, Noel. To nice to meet you. Happy birthday. I just heard um, there's your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Nice. What's up, bro? What's, What's your name? I'm Jacob. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Yes. You got all these guys lifting? Is it yeah, part of it? Yeah, everyone lifts. We all lift. I did, I did we a fucking pump on the way here. Did just you really to, get a pump? They wore off. But yeah, I, can, I brought, it doesn't look like I brought Liam. Well, it looks like this guy is flexing his lats right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. That guy's flaring his lats right now. my lats. Do I need to be? You just look like that? Damn, you're fucking Jack. That I'm guy's not, Jack. I'm not flexing my lats. You're definitely flexing your lats. No, I'm not. What about lats? Tell me what your lats are. I don't even know what fucking lats are. Yo. Okay, let's do this podcast, dude. Okay, yeah. it was nice so, uh, drinking with you, Brad. Wow, that was amazing. Noel, that was great work. Thank you. Was, I was, I'm really proud of you. Thank you so much. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really proud we're, of you, we too. We are very responsible adults. <laughs> Turn 21, you film dumbass YouTube videos getting drunk. Okay, let's do this shit. What's up, bro? Let's What's go. going on? Oh, let's go. Oh, good to see you wow, again. Wow, it's crazy. <laughs> this is cool, dude. Damn, you're way uh, yes. taller in person, man. I've seen you like seven times. All right, let's. Yeah, that's normally what they say, right? They tell me I'm taller in person. I think you are one of the taller, definitely one of the taller creators that I've met. I hide sure. it. Yeah, I definitely hide it. You sit behind the desk. Mm hmm. I sit Jeff down. FM. I watched a couple episodes on the way over. Yeah? Yeah. We just fuck around, man. I mean, to be honest. Bro, that's what it is. That's what we do for a living. Oh, you know, we just fuck incredible. around. You got tan, bro. I got, uh, it's a little burnt right now. I'll get tan. You burnt up? Yeah. Or is that the alcohol? No, actually, <laughs> I was out. So, long story short, I'll tell you on the pod. Okay. I was at the beach. Let's just sit down. Yeah, yeah I was at the beach. Started, right? and I it's a good start, right? I'm just twist it up right now. What's that? I do kills. Where's that accent from? Liverpool. Liverpool. Okay. My city, my people, my heart. We were listening what? to a song on the way up. I don't know, you're over here, some Liverpool music. Are you like, you're born and raised there? Obviously. Yeah. Big ass accent. He's been here for 10 years. So there's no excuse. How do you not lose that? Why would I lose that? Well, people lose it. What? What'd you say? What'd you say? No, my cool. city, my What'd you say? Why would I lose it? Ah, because you spent 10 years somewhere listening to other people. Come, just come do the podcast. You want to do the podcast? You want to sit in? You can do whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. Is this an open seat? seat? Yeah. I just like his accent, man. He just yeah, seems mad cool. Up. Okay, I like this now. Ah, welcome back to Raw Talk. <laughs> Today on the show, we got Jeff Whitty. Ah, athlete. Oh, I want to be introduced as an athlete. Is that camera on? Yo, I fucked yeah, that dude. You're you gotta fix that. Are we rolling? Did you just fuck Thank that you. up? I fucked that up. Great. You Here, take this. Here. This has been uh, uh this is honestly one of the one of the episodes that I've been I've been waiting for, the most. Really? Yes. Man, you just had Mike Majalik on yeah. and George Janko. Yeah, but like I I've been wanting to talk to you, man. Really? Yeah. Because when I first talked to you. You were like fighting random people. From what I remember, like you were giving people boxing gloves and then you were like, fight me. <laughs> and like people were doing it. Oh, you were in Miami. It. Yes. Yeah. I think I was just yeah. going through so much that I was like, you know what? Fuck it. This is before I even met Liam. Liam's going to be sitting in on this. He's a, yeah. he's a ex fighter. He's oh, you're a fighter. Like, you do kind of look like a fighter. I don't think this is on. No, yeah, you got to be way closer to that, my boy. No, it's not on. Yeah, it's on. I hear you. Oh, your, your shit's my on? My on. city, my people, my heart. Is we were just on? listening to is Liverpool music on the way here. No. And I'm pumped on? up. That's fine. Well, at least you're on the fucking, you're on there. Okay. So you I just look official. Me. Okay. I'll yeah, fuck official. it. So at that time, I was just like, I hadn't made YouTube videos in a while. I made that documentary and then I was like, fuck it. Let's just come back wild. Let's just box people on the beach. Yeah. And I wanted to fight, but I couldn't really get a sanctioned fight because I, I had like the eye problems. I had no eye socket. So you can't really get cleared for a fight when you're when your eyes hanging out. Yeah. So you were just fighting people on the street. You were like, I needed, to, Miami, get, you were like I needed to let it out somehow, you know, you're just a fighter or what? What is this? But it was with the 16 ounces. You know, it's like pillows. Got yeah. Pillows but, on. But either way. It's like just randomly, you know, someone can just knock you the fuck out. Well, and then I saw you at the fight and you were like, give me a body shot, bare knuckle. And you ate it. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. What the fuck is this guy made out of? Yeah, that was fun, man. Yeah. So let, let's talk about you, though, bro. Like, wh wh who who are you? Like, where are you from? Like, what? Like, what's your story? Uh, like, where'd you grow up? 
Um, like, how did you get here? I want to. That's what this is. Shit's all about. I want to understand that. Okay. Like, where Where did you start? Hometown. Uh, I grew up in New York City. My dad was uh, he drove trains in Brooklyn and then he worked for the bus department. My mom was in the World Trade Center. That's where she used to work. She was in 9-11. She got out. Um, and I just yeah, I grew up in New York my whole life. I was a barber in a barber shop in New York City. So, so you were really a barber. Yeah, I was okay. really a barber. I was a barber for I, I mean, I still am kind of, but I just don't do haircuts in a barber shop as much anymore. I'm a little rusty. Yeah. A lot has happened since then. You need to be on top of your craft to really sure. be up there with the best. But um, I just do it for the show now. You know, now I'm a content creator, comedian, whatever you want to call yeah, so, it. So, but like, let's, so before all this content creation and comedian stuff, like, like where, where are you coming from? Like Selling parents, weed. Were you, were you a drug dealer actually? I moved out here because you could buy pounds of weed for cheaper. And if you ship them back to New York successfully, you can double your money. Is this a real fact? This is a real, well, it was at the time. Now there's a gray area. It's like the prohibition and you can't make as much as you used to back in the day. And that's kind of why I was like fading out. Like I knew this wasn't going to last forever. So you were a real drug dealer. I mean, I mean, listen, you're not going to criminate yourself. To what? Oppo no, I don't opposed to me. I've, I've done, I've done jail time for it. I have records. Okay. So I've opposed to me, a fake, a fake drug dealer. Like I'm not a real drug dealer. Oh, I thought all that stuff was real. Cause I just was like, all right, I already did the time for this. I learned my lesson. I don't sell drugs anymore. It was only weed. It wasn't killing people. Right, right. Steroids is another story. That's helping people, you know. So you thought it, I was a real drug dealer? I thought you you're slinging at least some testosterone over here. You got even your cameraman. Maybe like maybe like once or twice. No, <laughs> your cameraman's ready for a bodybuilding show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Why I mean, the like, fuck does he need to be that jack to hold that small camera? Yeah, I mean, but like you know. That's like more like personal, like, hey, my buddy's like, yo, I want to I want to get some stuff. I'm like, All right, I got you, you know, but it's not so much. I'm out here like, <laughs> Just on the, the streets. Being yeah. like, yo, okay. you need some shit. I'm on the corner. I'm not doing that. There we know? go. We got our title. Bradley Martin admits to being a drug dealer. Actually, I did actually sell drugs at one point. OK, there yeah, we go. It's a real story. As long as it's not, as long as you're not slinging heroin to this no, no, opiates never, and fentanyl never. and people are dropping dead because of what you're doing just to make more money, then, no. you know. Uh, it was more like to buddies who were like, yo, I want this. And then I was like, all right, I got you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that comes up a lot in the gyms and barber yeah. shops. You meet a lot of people. You make a lot of connections. And yeah. those are good places to hang out. So I got a question for you. Before you got into social media, why did you think you'd be successful on social media? I didn't. I thought I, you know. I thought I would eventually have some like entourage lifestyle, you know, like growing up watching entourage, watching Vinny Chase and just the dream is to have you and all your boys out in, what year in was L.A. This? What year was this? Um, this was probably I'm talking like when I was 16, so probably like 15 years ago. OK. Yeah. But that um, wasn't really realistic because I wasn't pursuing it actively i wasn't trying to get auditions i remember i got an, an agent once and i did one audition and it was for like a nickelodeon show and it didn't go with my vibe at all and i got all pissed off because they like basically abused me they're like okay this is that's great thank you like, so you nickelodeon go. not your thing i wasn't the guy for nickelodeon <clears throat> and then, then how, i just then how did you get linked up with david dobrik well it was there's a lot that happened before that so i moved into 600 vine to uh basically just use that as like my my trap house it was a place i would meet people and and do everything i needed to do and that place became the mecca of viners and content creators before like youtube was a big thing and like collaborations was a big thing because vine kind of blew that whole thing this up this is like 2001 15 yeah around yeah around there okay. i guess probably yeah around 2015 so I was I'm walking sure in, in hockey bags yeah you were in the gym i'm for sure i'm walking hockey bags into my apartment of weed and there's like King Batch riding a hoverboard with a SpongeBob backpack on filming a vine down what like sounds, coming down the hall. Sounds exactly right. And I was like, you know, that like that guy looks familiar, but I wasn't like gonna chase him down and be like, yo, you know, I, I had a different objective at the time. I was like, make money and then when I make the money, I'll be able to fund whatever projects I want to do in the future. So I actually did fund uh, uh I produced a short film so I could test out if I could be an actor and I gave myself the leading role. Really? I had some friends, right? It, and I had a lot, like a lot of other friends and social media stars and actors be in it. My ex-girlfriend at the time, she was like nice enough to be in my like $80,000 budget short film. Well, how'd you get the 80,000 selling drugs? Actually, that's how you got the money to. Uh, yeah, this is raw that's talk, fucking right? You want fucking raw talk? No, but that's true. This is the truth. I've lost $200,000 in a phone call. I've like had somebody hit me up like, yo, we got popped. It's done. And I had to deal with that. And then, you know, there's a lot of struggles there too. So I'm like, 
numb to all this bullshit now because I've already gone through so many stages of my life. Yeah. So when did you realize like social media was a, a way for you to go, a direction for you? When everything was going wrong and I started getting hit up with opportunities and brand deals for major brands, American Express and stuff like that. And I'm like, why the fuck am I going to sell weed when I'm getting offered this trip to but Coachella how did the how did the about. how did the how did because obviously for brands to start hitting you up and be like hey you got followers you yeah how did you start getting followers okay um because i love your personality i think you're fucking hilarious thank I you i love man. the type of humor i'm just Same. curious where I need it a started big guy like this on the team we need i, I know you're already kind of uh taken you have a crew. no i got my own i'm my own crew what you mean and i'm a free they don't even got a, me on the fucking podcast <laughs> the fuck? yeah I'm a, I'm a free agent right now too i don't yeah. know if you know if you've been keeping up with the news yeah, no, I, I've, I mean, that's something I want to talk to you about, but we, I know we got to touch, we get to, we to be light on that. Cause well, some, yeah, whatever. It's fucking raw talk, you know? We'll but get, what, so, so, so let me ask then, what's the deal right now with David? Um, I mean, what can you say? We're not really talking, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I felt really fucking pissed off just hearing the stuff he said. Imagine somebody does something to you like that and then kind of puts out a video where, they blame you the whole time and then throw you a little fucking sorry this happened to you at the end of it. That yeah. really set me off. So I was like, all right, this guy's never going to learn. I guess I'll just talk to some lawyers, see what they think, let them right. handle it, take it. Because I can't have this stress in my life. If I want to come on camera and be funny. and, and So is, this, and, is it becoming like a real legal thing? Yeah, and it, it takes a lot of your energy out. You yeah. know, It'll put you in a, in a bad mood when you have to get on the phone with a lawyer and go over it an accident video that you regret and you got to fucking watch it a hundred times over and over again, but you have to go through that stuff when it comes to these things. So that's yeah. why I like just try to deal with those calls and that stuff when I have to, and then just get back to, you know, yeah. enjoying life. So let's take it back to what I was saying before. So you start, you see these guys, you're at vine. When did you, when were you like starting to build your platform? When were you starting to build Jeff Wittick on the internet? Well, I met Rudy Mancuso, Dude, you know, oh, Rudy. You know, you know yeah. Rudy? Yeah, yeah. Super talented. Yeah. Um, he did it all. He was a musician. He would film, edit, write his jokes, all this stuff. What does he I, do now? I haven't seen him as much. I think he's doing a movie now. I don't know really? if I'm allowed to say what it is. Okay. But uh, I think he's doing a big movie that's like potentially, uh, it could be like Marvel or something. Because like I know he or, like he writes songs for people too, right? Yeah. Is something he does? Yeah, yeah. he's working with Bieber a yeah. lot and... Yeah, a lot, a lot of fun times we had. He put me on, basically, and my ex-girlfriend at the time. We had this, like, uh, double date set up where him and his girlfriend was my ex-girlfriend at the time's co-host on a show. So we would film our skits together, yeah. and they would have an actual show at Warner Brothers, and we would go visit, like, schmucks, like, just fucking, who are these guys? They film videos yeah. on their phone, and there's this huge production for our girlfriends. And, you know, it's cool. It, it's cool how like traditional media and social media is like, you know, just watching it play out over the years, like pandemic, things got crushed. TV shows can't be filmed. We'll be like, fuck it. Let's just film. Set social up a couple went cameras. Crazy. Yeah, social went crazy. Yeah. But at the time, I owe a lot to them. They gave me a shot. Rudy was like, yeah, you just you're funny. You say fucking wild shit. I don't know if you're serious or not. I don't know if you're even like. You, like all the stuff I'm that's saying, like, I'm, I'm telling you that's now. That's the best humor, though. Like I fucking <laughs> sold all these drugs and somehow became a viner. But you really did sell those drugs. That's though. how it worked out. That's how yeah. it played out in order. I love and it. Then I made my own barbershop show because, you know, I, I had these people all asking me for haircuts. So I basically, um, the hardest part about doing a podcast or some sort of collaborative show like this is booking a guest. That's the most annoying part, right? Yes. Chasing people down. Tana. Uh, go fuck yourself, Tana. She's By tough the way, to get a hold of, bro. I just want to say, go fuck yourself. She'll even say that she's coming, and then like, oh, she canceled the day. Yo, out. yo, hold on, hold on. Where's my phone at? This shit's so funny. Hold on, I gotta read you this fucking message, dude. So I told her I was like four o'clock, right? This is actually really funny shit, dude. And I was like, is she? Is was she, she supposed to be here today? And I feel no, 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 no. Fuck no, no. This was this was yesterday, but this is her response. I said, I said four p.m. at nine in the morning. Okay. Yeah. And I don't give a fuck if she sees this. <laughs> Yesterday, 5.53, she you. goes, no, no, we're going to have her on the podcast. She's going to have to explain this shit. Because okay. I want to understand it. What do you think about this text? Do you guys think this is bullshit? Like, because it's, it's a little crazy. She's probably wasted when she... Probably. <laughs> four, I said 4 p.m., 9 a.m. At 9 a.m., send a text. So 4 p.m., that's the time we're doing the podcast. <clears throat> 5.53. 
Oh my God. I completely forgot. Oh my God. Oh my God. What do I do? I'm so sorry. I would literally love to do this. I'm heartbroken right now. Oh my God. Should have sent her a zoom link. Send her a zoom link. Oh, you're going to do it right huh? now. Do it right Full now. Of shit. <laughs> Full of shit. Full of shit. That's what I'm saying. I don't even and know so why I'm... you want to run the show. Well, now she got to fucking explain herself. So she's got to come here and explain herself in person because the bigger issue is like, I was like, you know, I'm good, but like, I don't want to tell them like, yo, pull up. And then they're all, everyone's waiting around and like, I'm looking like a dickhead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so, so it is what it is. We'll have to have, she'll have to explain it. But so anyway, what do you do in a situation like that when you got the whole crew set up and your guest cancels? Do you just wing it? You just shoot some like OnlyFans content, just like pull my dick out <laughs> oh. and just start jerking it. Hey, all right, yeah. that's it. I'll no, I'm kidding. Wait, I don't do it. OnlyFans I don't do any OnlyFans now. It was just a shitty joke. She, that's what she does. Like. That's, she does that, that is what she does. She, she crushes that apparently. She just got a plaque for ten million dollars. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what? She made ten mil of OnlyFans. Yes, bro. Really? I just saw that shit too. Yeah, it's I actually. I don't know how the fuck people would pay to watch it. I don't. I mean, dude, <laughs> like, I don't even like. I mean, in I listen, general, in like, general, porn is free, but I I don't understand the whole OnlyFans I mean, that, market. That, she she's not attractive at all. I okay, think. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh there, my there god, are, this guy's a there, savage. There are people that are obsessed with Tana. Yeah, there's I, like, I've I I've realized know. it from. <laughs> It's, it's because like you know people love her personality love the fact yeah. she's raw she, she just don't give a fuck yeah. that's what people love about her i know that for sure and i'm not i mean she's not necessarily my type in particular but you know someone i'm sure someone sees her like yo she's beautiful do you think she's pretty my person my personal type it's yeah. not for me do you think she's pretty i mean she's pretty but she's not like she's yeah but like it's not my type you know what i'm saying tell the truth i'm telling the truth i like a little darker skin you know a little Oh, there you go. You got something yeah, in common. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you too? Yeah. My boy, let's go. That's what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah. What about you? You got a girl? I like whatever. You yeah. know, I don't have a type. It's, it's yeah, whatever phase I'm in at the time. But back to what we were saying. Yes, so, sir. Uh, book and guess is always a headache. So I would have all these people, all these viners, once word spread that I was a barber in the building and also sold a little weed, you know, here and there. Everybody was hitting me up all the time. So I had these people coming to my house yeah. and I'm like, fuck it. I'll make a talk show out of this. And I could also mess with people. They're nervous because they're coming to a new barber. And that just kind of started, you know, picking up a little bit. I had a few shot and then I had the same manager as David and the whole, like a couple guys in the blog squad. So we right. all linked up I Had a great friendship for, you know, the time being BC before crane and <laughs> <laughs> then uh, some things played oh, out. We, we tried to make everything work, and then you know, just it, it was tough. There's a lot that was going on, and I didn't know I was going to be getting surgery so much over and over and over again. So we didn't think it would play out like this at the time. But um, yeah, shit happens. Life goes on. You know what are you going to do? Yeah. So would you fight David Dobrik if you had the chance? Hell yeah! But you know, how can we make that happen? It'll get him to sign a contract. You know, get get the lawyers involved. You know? I would never fight. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah, I mean, that'd be dope though. Yeah, maybe like I for like an eye. Some the sort match of like, would be I for exactly. an eye. For an eye. We could sell the, the shit ultimate out of that. battle right there. I brought it up to my manager, but I think he was just like. I mean, maybe I, you could fight with one hand. Um. Yeah, I think David suggested that he wanted to do like a tennis match or something like that. Yeah, it sounds like that. Like a but, tennis, like Crockett or something. Um. You know, he's actually really good at tennis. He's a good athlete. You know, people will underestimate him, but in the fight in the boxing ring, yeah, that's. Maybe not. So maybe gonna, maybe not it. where it's gonna go. But I, yeah, we'd have to trick him into it or something like that. So so trick why him into signing something? Maybe I'll just get my manager to give him like, hey, this is a brand deal from SeatGeek. Sign it, and maybe he'll. Oh, if it's a SeatGeek deal, he'll be like, wait, SeatGeek? Yeah, yeah man. Uh, he signs the Wait, how much money is that? Wait, oh shit. Okay, cool. In one just month, fall I have to right find in. Jeff, loser loses an eye. Imagine. And then I I, I lose and I have no eyes. <laughs> you fuck. That would fucking be horrible, huh? Dude, you wouldn't lose, man. I don't think you could lose that fight. I, think it's I don't think I could lose in general. I, I think I could that. take on anybody. My right. mentality, I think I could. Right, Liam? Tell him. That Liam, speak for me, please. Go ahead. Speak for him. He'll he kill everyone. We've been working on kicks. I came into the gym the other day because I'm I'm kind of all into like just combat I feel like we should just fight. Me and you should just fight. Right now? Like, or do you want to save fight. it for the end of the show? <laughs> we should just. Probably the end. Yeah. Probably the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. we'll end it with that. Do you yeah. fight? I mean, I mean uh, <laughs> we'll see. End of the show. Okay. We'll see. So I became a big fan of UFC. He's obviously a traditional boxer. Liverpool, been in the U.S. for 10 years, still has that accent stronger than ever. It doesn't make how, any how many sense boxing, at all. How many ma matches? Uh, 13 professional. 13. You 13. can look him up, Liam Vaughn. He's got some nice knockouts on there. So just pressure, fucking beating the shit out of people, body shots. Yeah, Liam. Uh, you'll, you'll like see a professional. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love it. I trained with Freddie Rose Fuck yeah. Really? Yeah, that's dope. I was around Pacquiao. He was my manager, actually, Manny Pacquiao. What do you think about Mayweather? The best. The best he was with Pacquiao manager. sparring partner for he was years. Manny for a long time. Miguel Cotto. Damn. Them. They all speak very highly of him. He's very well connected. And do you like? Do you? How do you know him? Like boxing? I've known like him ten years. I went in. What the fuck? So I used to go into the boxing gym and just fuck around before like anything because I just always loved you know, just fitness and you know combat sports and I had no idea what I was doing when I first walked into wild card. I've only been in like street fights and like breaking my hand from fighting at the barber shop. Yeah. And I finally went in there. I met Liam. I would see Liam run in the streets of Hollywood back when we were in our partying days, and this guy would just always be committed, just out every time I drove my car. I would see Liam on the street running, and yeah, we finally linked up at, I think it was Vin- Vinny fight. I saw you at catch and you were like, yeah, what the yeah. fuck happened to your eye? Yeah, you, fucking, yeah. <laughs> you told me straight up just how it is. Like your fucking eye is fucked up. Something happened. So we start talking and it's just good to have people around you like yeah. that. That'll, that'll say how, how much it is. vision do you have out of that eye? So out of this eye, um, I didn't smash my eyeball. I smashed my eye socket. So your so eye's still good. My eye's good. Yeah. yeah. But we're just trying to get it into the right place and get the eye socket developed. So that's why I bought HGH to Smart. rebuild tissue. Smart. Because I get some Anavar too. Yeah. Yeah. What does that do? It's a little bit. Whatever. Give it to us. Who cares? We'll figure it out after. <laughs> we'll look it up on Google because I wanna like it says it heals muscle tissue and even in your eye you have muscles and you have tissues I mean, and growth hormone is like it's the it's the fountain of youth. So for us. Obviously, our bodies produce it naturally. And as we age, we get to a point where we start to produce less and less and less. And that's how people age because they're making less and less of this what hormone over time. What age do you think starts HGH, in your opinion? Oh, man. I mean, that's... Like 30, 35? That's a tough question because, like, obviously my audience is, like, kids who are probably like, I want to know this <laughs> fucking answer. And there's no right answer. It really depends. Like, the, the, the important thing for anyone listening, if you're hearing this now, I have to make this official... If you're ever thinking about doing anything like this, you need to get your levels checked first. Remember, you guys asked me about should your boy take I it? I asked you to do a visual observation, just yeah. a scan. This is shit you can't do, right? You have to make sure that like, you're actually checking what's going on in your body. Like, Get your growth hormone levels checked, oh, really? How what you have naturally, your testosterone, all this stuff, before you ever even consider any exogenous hormones, which is just hormones that are outside the body that you're giving. Everyone's going to get to a point where it's like you, you're going to probably want to feel better than you do right so as these guys get older like in getting the exogenous testosterone is going to help keep them yeah, at a young. level where they feel keep great. Them young. so growth hormone is the main hormone in the sense of like your skin your hair your nails the pr- yeah. like production of all these cells that keep you young looking young but also like regeneratively like to fix the like issues. i don't know what it's going to do for my eye my vision is a little fucked up because of the placement of my eyes so they're not like aligned so I just want it to heal whatever it can. I'm trying whatever. I did stem cells. I'm just doing whatever the fuck I can. If Elon's like, be the test dummy for the neural link, I'll be you like, fuck it. it. Let's do it. Pop it in there. You know? Yeah, it'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> Drill right in. Fuck. But so I'm, I'm curious, like, why, why would you think going and fighting random people on the beach in Miami is a good idea if your eye's like still trying to heal? I got to live my life, bro. You know, I got to still have fun. You know, I got to feel like myself. People ask me, you just got in a near death accident. Why do you feel a need to go jump out of a plane again? It's because I couldn't let myself turn into that, that person Fearful. that, yeah, that yeah. an accident will do. Like a near death accident can really change your life. And I loved who I was before that. And I didn't want it to, obviously that version of me is dead. There's a new version of me that hopefully is new and improved. And that's just life. You know, you get older, you figure shit out. Of course. But yeah. You yeah, just didn't want to, you didn't want to find yourself in a position where like, you felt like you were using this as a crutch for not doing other things in your life. Yeah, exactly. So I went right back to skydiving school, did another like 10 jumps to finish, get my license and do jumps out of hot air balloons and stuff like that. I just didn't want to f- sit around feeling sorry for myself, which still ends up happening when you have to do more surgeries. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a constant, you know, I talk, I, I complain enough on my podcast about this stuff. Yeah. So. Well, it's the first time here. I mean, I'm, I haven't heard it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, this is this is an important thing, I think, to bring up. Like you said, just talking about not putting yourself in a position of, oh, I feel like this happened to me. So now my circumstances are all just like this. Not being a victim of your circumstances. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's one of the most powerful things I think a lot of people listening can, can relate to or try to understand if you guys are not getting this. Like if something happened to you in your life, obviously, like fucking your face up to a, to a, like a crazy degree, which would happen to you. Yeah. Could put a lot of people in a damper on a lot of people's lives and be like, oh, I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that now. Or 
And you being able to say like, fuck it, this is where I'm at. I'm just going to keep going forward. There's power in that. And I just want to encourage people listening to do the fucking same thing. Yeah, thank you. That's dope, bro. Uh, I think it's amazing. It I think lot. now you need to fight David Dobrik. <laughs> I would love to, but you, you know, got to. You got to sign the contract. I can't just go Fuck do it. it was, you know, catch him at fucking. That'll catch him at catch. No, 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 no. <laughs> like Jorge Masvidal, <laughs> and like then the, I'm back in jail. Did you, you see know? all that shit? I Which just, I don't give a fuck about jail, but it's just like I, I, the rest of the stuff that is going on. I don't want to just keep attack. I, you know, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm, no, I get it. So what? What other big projects are you working on right now? Besides, um, besides the podcast, it's amazing. I, I love brought it. you. I brought you some. Uh, because I'm, I'm not gonna lie, man. Listen, I did the podcast thing, the little bit where I jumped in on the Zoom call, and I hit up Natalie right after, and I was like, "Yo, we gotta do some need, fucking shit to, like this." Yeah, we go through a lot of trial and error to figure out how to make things innovative and fucking. What is uh, what's different. in this bag? Are you gonna? This is oh, a, okay. So I brought you products, hair what's products. Like a, oh, I hair. Mean, you can put them in your beard or, or whatever, okay. chest hair. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> And oh, this I is also sick. got you some of these babies, some hats, some of the classics. Oh, you know I love these. Let's go. I know you're a hat guy. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So that's what we got out right now. The product line I'm very excited about. We so, got the odorants coming out. So everything. merch stuff. Um, well, merch, yeah. But I'm more focused on the products. I'm, I'm very invested in like the labs and doing multiple different takes on products just different samples the testing fuck is this? uh that i brought just in case you needed another one the fuck is it, 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 it's out of the package because it was mike malik used it before he but he's that. clean so, so you're gonna let me fucking. use mike's used fucking needle i mean it's it, it's just what, what it's mike like, bro he, you know he's our friend he, yeah but like what's he got I mean, jesus christ like this he, was really used like whose needle is it? Share it wait yeah. wait a second i got it from mike he told me to bring it over because you might like, did you some. actually like yeah no yeah. this is a lid like uh, if, did you, you guys read, can't see this did, shit did you read mike's book i i did but this is legitimately then yeah what's the big deal this is know? a used needle <laughs> try it out who cares it's you just guys mike. can't yeah well i'm not gonna do that that is completely unsanitary this is real though i suppose people Wait, understood okay. give past the needle okay there's some products in there you okay, got we got it i love the comb this thank you for the beard what thank is this? you what is this it's uh, that's a texture, texture spray. spray. You can give that to your lady or uh, this is for hair. It's for it's their hair products. Yeah. Yes. But it, I'm going full. It's a little disrespectful grooming. to me. I know. I know. I know. I figured that would happen. That's why I brought. The I hats. really like this, though. Thank you. I really like this. We're, like the, the, the feel of this is dope as fuck. Thank you. Yeah, okay. it, it was a, a lot okay, of Mr. Great scrap. fucking hair. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> right. I wear hats a lot, too, because there's a lot of pressure. You know, now people think I'm going to have perfect hair all the time. If I get caught out with a bad hair day, my whole company could be fucking oh, this is ruined. That's the pomade. Went yeah. for a classic baseball look with that. Wow. How, how long have you been doing this stuff? Well, I've been cutting hair my whole Damn, life. Damn, this is fucking, this is actually really dope packaging. Thank you. Like, I'm not one, because, like, I'm big with branding stuff. Like, I got the raw gear. I got all the clothing stuff. Yeah. This is actually fucking sexy. Thank you. Yeah, no, a lot. Of, we put a lot of work into it. God I'm, damn, I'm very the texture proud of even. It. One of my lowest points throughout the recovery, I put those products when I first wow. got the packaging in and we were settled on it. I put them by my nightstand and I would wake up and look at it every day because it would motivate me to do more than just have to throw a camera in my face yeah. and be miserable, you know? This Not is, saying that I'm miserable filming all the time, but at that time when I had my half my face smashed in, you like didn't want it. You didn't want to. I didn't want to film like all that. the time, so I yeah. worked a lot on that. And how do you deal with that? Because like I notice, like you wear sunglasses a lot now. Oh, uh, I mean, it's nice because the fucking bright lights in the podcast. I'm fine with it, but you know, um, I'll take them off if you want. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. What do you think, Liam? Fucking put them back on. <laughs> No, you're good. You look fucking amazing. Looks Thank normal, you. Right? No, you that. look fucking normal as fuck. Thank you. So in the time, yeah, it was a shitty time, but I was like, well, how can I make the best of the situation? How can I, you know, shift my yeah, um, just time and effort into this? Because I, I couldn't work out. I fractured my hip. My leg I had a bunch of torn ligaments. My jaw was broken. I had to drink in shores. Like I was really fucked up in the first two months. So how long I, was the whole recovery process? I mean, we're still doing it. I had a surgery a month ago. So, Holy fuck. Yeah, and I'll have another one in like six more months. But, um, yeah, uh, it's you can still do shit, you know? Like, I, yeah. I thought I would have to work out to make myself feel sane every day. And I got in the habit of that. I quit drinking alcohol. My release was getting in a solid run or a good workout. Yeah. And then, I had like, both, like, now everything. I don't have vices at all. So yeah. I was like, let me just work on something else. 
just stay positive, stay, you know. When did you find the gym? Um, jail. Yeah. Really? Yeah. How long were you in jail for? Um, multiple different occasions, never more than a year. It was like little four month skits here and there. It like, uh, out here I did a month in Miami. I did a few months and, um, New York when I was younger, there were like little, you know, ones here and there, but you're younger. So they throw you right out. Yeah. And you know, back then I still had my parents to fucking throw me bail money if right. it was like affordable. But, um, yeah. Uh, well, so when I was in LA County, it was a lot different than every other experience I had when I got locked up in here. It's so political and it's just gang. Like you need to join a gang the second you get in and each gang has their program. So if you don't stick to their programs, you're getting beat up or you get a strike. And if you get three strikes, you get beat up. So I would just like, I'm down for the workouts and there was no alcohol. There's no, uh, like you get fed three times so a day. So prior to this, you're you kind of on like a diet. No, I was like a little skinny fat, like out of shape looking like skinnier guy. You yeah. know, I wasn't that into fitness back then. I played sports when I was younger. I was in like, I played baseball. Yeah. Babe Ruth league. I stopped around high school cause I started working. But, um, yeah, I did that. I, uh, I don't even know. I fucking, I, I just started, so, I started doing burpees. We would have to do 113 burpees yeah. because of MS 13. It's because the, the whites are allied with the, with the, all the Mexican gangs. Um, yeah. So it was like, if I'm not doing 113, I'm getting my head smashed in. So I was like, fuck it. I'll do two, three hundred. Is it really you know? like that though? It's not even that bad. 113 burpees a day. No, I mean, but are they, they really going to like, uh, they're, they're not at really... war, bro. You're at war in there. The guards don't give a fuck. So you take your crew that you need to look out for your dorm. Like, okay, I want my people to be strong. Like other gangs won't care as much, but at least like these guys, they want to make sure all their guys are fit in case a fucking riot breaks out. And that's why they're so hard on you for working out every day. It's kind of nice. You know, it's like you got. So did that trickle over into uh, everyday life after then? You're like, I got to keep this up. I need to do 113 or do you feel Well, like I was like, I don't want to just go to like that shit that I just went through sucked. I don't want to put that to waste so i kept up with it after that and then i like learned how to do like circuits and you know work out with weights but i still pretty much just do like body weight stuff body weight stuff no mm -hmm. like no like bodybuilding type shit no like machine stuff N no you're not trying to get a pump in the gym no i'm just trying to be fit and yeah. like agile i want to be like a ninja you know i'm not like i have different goals i and that's why we wanted to ask you what your goals were because obviously you have a physique that has taken uh, probably a decade at least to get, yeah, yeah. you know, long time. Um, currently, this is actually really interesting. You asked me this right now because for the last, I want to say four years, I've been so caught up in making content and like, you know, collaborating, flying, shooting content, business stuff, back end stuff, brand building stuff, management stuff, the gym stuff that I've, I've, I really did lose focus on my own physical goals. Like I yeah. really stopped being like, okay, I'm going to do this for myself. When prior to like all this internet shit, <clears throat> the only reason why I ended up here beyond the fact that I like had conversation, I told parts of my life, like my upbringing, where I've been from. And then people were like, oh, I appreciate this. I appreciate the th stories that you're telling, you know, about your past, about your life and what you've been through. The reason why I got here was because I just, I really did it like mm -hmm. trained and I didn't do it for this. I did it because that's what made me feel fucking sane, right? Yeah. So I did that for years. And the next thing you know, like I, I wasn't because social media didn't exist. I started back in 2011, like when the apps first started Instagram. Yeah. And I was like, yo, like I was just filming my life. I was taking pictures of my life. It wasn't like there were influencers and you can make money doing shit. And like, this is why I do it. And I want to be like that guy who makes money and drives cars. I was just like, I was a trainer. Yeah. And I was like, this would be cool. I'll put my client's progress and take pictures of like myself. Cause like, that's what I was doing. Like, so I just did it and I kept doing it. And then as it became a thing that everyone goes, we want to see you do this. It changes. Yeah. Like it changes drastically where then now I find myself shooting content to appease people. When prior I was just working out because it was just the thing that made me feel fucking okay with myself. Yeah. Like it made me feel okay. Yeah, it's so, very similar, like, upbringing. Like, this is what your thing was. You found your, your niche, and then you made that into content, and now you made, made a personality out of it, yeah. your personality and everything. Did you yeah, ever like compete? I, I did. I did some of the first men's physique competitions back in 2011. Yeah. So when men's, men's physique first came out, um, I did, like, the first shows. But like you said, yeah, I mean, I was talking about on your podcast the other day, 
your buddy asked that shitty question. Like, I grew up without a father. And my, my thing was like, yeah, just sorry feel- about that, by the way. No, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's so long ago now. Like it's, yeah. it is a joke. I have to make it a joke. If right? you were in like, studio, would you have got up and given him a, a no, 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 I would have made the same joke. Cause like, I can't expect someone who doesn't know to know. Yeah. And it's like, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Jokes are jokes. It is yeah. what it is. But that's where I started from. I started from wanting to feel good about myself and then I'm good enough. And then mm. I just like got caught up with the gym. It was never for the internet. Like a lot of kids nowadays, they see this stuff probably that I'm doing or other social media people are doing. They're like, oh, I want to do what Brad is doing or I want to do what that guy is doing. I didn't do this shit because I saw anyone do it on the internet. I did this shit because I felt terrible at, at, as a human being. Mentally. Yeah, about myself. Like yeah. being like, am I not good enough? Why did my dad leave me? Is it like, did he not love me? And it's all these questions that when I was training, <clears throat> Nothing else mattered. Yeah. When I was lifting the weight, I didn't have to think about anything else. So I was like, if I can do this and not think about that, I need to do this as much as I can. Yeah. That's how I started. Yeah. I appreciate it. That's how I started. And it wasn't like I want to be social media famous I, and make money. addicts, you know? Like, you just got to find a way to put that addiction into something positive. Like, yeah. this guy doesn't drink, never had a drug drink in his life, but he's a fucking addict when it comes to... Look at his coffee. He's got six creamers. Yeah. He has six creamers in there right now that he had flown yeah. out. He's, his friend flew it out from Liverpool. Fucking. It. It's a fancy creamer for sure. I know he's, they have better stuff in Europe anyways. He's but, addicted to strip clubs, going to, going to dinners at, at uh, Nobu. You know, like we find our ways. Strip clubs. Yes. Yeah. But no, so this is the thing, man, to answer your question. I know it's like a big loop around, but it was really like now, now you ask me this question. And, and so what I was saying was for the last, I want to say four years, I've just been making content. And like, I haven't been like, this is a goal that I'm going to do. Like, cause before the content, it was just like, this was just the thing that made me feel okay. Mm -hmm. And then I started making content. Cause like, Oh, I know people are liking this. Let me do more of this. And then you kind of lose your like, why in a sense, cause you're doing it, you know, to, to entertain people, to create content for people. And so I want to say in the last like month, I was like, fuck this shit. I'm getting shredded. I'm picking something for myself, a goal, like a physical goal, and I'm going to fucking chase it. That's why you, when you FaceTime and you call me, I'm on the fucking bike outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, well, at first, I'm, first time we FaceTime, I was like, yo, I'm sorry. I'm going through so much shit this week. And I, I was like, I want to do the podcast. But, you know, you were like, what the fuck are you doing cardio for? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> threw me off. You threw me, I was like, yo, this guy, he's, that's what I need to be doing right now. Yeah, How are you yeah. On the diet? What's that? How are you with the diet? Amazing. Except today, because I filmed, I filmed this video right before this. I'm fucking drinking. Yeah. I mean, are you good on the diet in general? So good, yeah. That's like, 90%, right? Oh, diet. it's everything. Your mm. diet's... That's the thing. Like, I don't think people realize that the, the biggest thing that this dieting... Try, me trying to get shredded right now currently has done for me. I st- I cut out all the bullshit. How's so your I'm, stomach right now? It's amazing. Oh, my God. You want to see it right now? Yeah. You want me to see it right now. <laughs> okay, well, I mean it's like a weird angle. It's fine. It's Fuck also it. it's I'm also uh I'm also fucking uh You don't always get to cares, pick the bro, angles. Just do it. Also, when you're doing a Marvel movie, you can't also, tell uh whatever his name is, Spielberg, that you want to fucking no, change of course. the angle. I'm also fucking red because I just gotta, you know. You look red. great, dude. What's the goal? What is your inspiration? Your your cause I mean, there's not Dude, look at this shit. <laughs> yeah, you gotta fucking burn up. Your favorite dude. bodybuilder. Oh man, favorite bodybuilder. Dorian so, Yates. Dorian Yates is one of my favorite. And is Dorian, he the best of all time? No, based on it, uh, accolades, no. But the, my favorite thing about Dorian Yates is the way that he trained, the intensity in which he trained. Like the small, shitty gym and all exactly. that. Exactly. If you watch Blood and Guts, Dorian Yates training, this guy is like balls to the wall, like beyond failure. Like this guy, these guys are fucking yelling at each other. Like, mm. be, like, 10, 20, 30, like the amount of reps, the, the kind of work that they're putting in is just what beyond think, failure. What do you think on the way he's changed his body now? And he's like one of the thickest, densest, grainiest, like hardest bodybuilders of all time. Legitimately. Yeah. One of the big, like he, he, he like, I mean, he set the standard when it came to training intense and his physique. I know on stage was one of like the craziest physiques. I know he didn't win tons of titles. How many did he win Olympia? Three was it or more? Ah, uh, fuck! I don't know the exact number. I can't say any. But, but like obviously Ronnie Coleman won way more titles, right? Yeah. Arnold won more titles. Yeah. But the way this guy trained was insane. So it's crazy now that I see he goes from like blood and guts to fucking yoga. He's a yogi now. Oh yeah, but it's like it makes sense though to me. I see that because like how long can you be doing? So much goes into what you're doing. Your meal preps. Yeah. The lifting, the cardio, like uh, you have everything dialed in. It's just hard to. Fair and then you got this on top of it. Up. Yeah, you can't you can't do this forever. What'd you say? 
Their bodies are beat up, right? Yeah, that's so that's injured, the thing. It's like you, you can't do like it. Forever. Arnold, I mean, he can't even lift a hairdryer to blow his hair. His really? arms are fucked up. Yeah. His, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Fuck. I'm surprised you understood what he said there. Yeah, Arnold lifts a hairdryer to blow his hair. Yeah, that's good. No, I get. It. I'm, I'm. I'm just. He talks really soft, but <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, I understand him. For I sure. understand. I was. I was almost gonna. F- his, their bodies are so beat up. From yeah. Because they go so. I mean, the, the guy who's got this body beat up the worst is fucking Ronnie Coleman, which yeah. I've been trying to get on the fucking podcast, by the way. Yeah, well, he's which watching, actually watching right now, Ronnie. I think it's, I think it's scheduled. Actually, I think we have a, we're gonna have a schedule. That'd be great. But April. that's why I asked what the goal is because, like, for me, it's health. Like, I want to be able to live long. Yes. I want to be able to just feel good mentally and and physically. But like, ideal body type that like I would set as a as a goal. Probably, I think the most sought after is like Brad Pitt Fight Club. You know, when he's down. Oh the my fucking, god! You know, he's he's down there in the basement and he's just got blood coming it's a off classic. his face it's and fucking he's ripped. Classic. And he's skinny as fuck though. You know, yeah, he probably yeah. weighed 150 pounds there, but on camera he looks, of course, like he's like. No, know. that's one of the best bodies as far as I'm concerned in Hollywood at the time. But he I was mean, now, nowhere near like. Well, what, it's not about because it doesn't have to be huge, you know. Yeah, you don't it, be huge. that's so different. Different goals. So, different anyways, goals. like so, like you're saying on the health tip, like when I started this diet now, not only does like the the idea that I'm okay, I'm I'm so focused on this, like wanting it to be, you know, me wanting to get lean, but at the same time cutting the calories in the sense of like the sugar and the excess bullshit. Yeah. I noticed the biggest thing that I've been like, oh, I love this. And like, I'm just kind of upset with myself that I hadn't done it sooner was the, the structure that it created with the rest of my life. Meaning like me cutting the sugar, cutting the bullshit, saying no, being like, oh, like someone's like, get this. I'm like, no, I can't have it. Fuck. I got to go eat this. Not that it's bad, but I'm letting go of like all the other shit that I do really want to eat. Like the fucking Chick-fil-A, the Shake Shack, yeah, the shit yeah, here yeah, and there that I really want to keep doing these burger reviews with him and I'm yeah, eating crazy. these shit burgers, but I need to gain weight. Yeah, I, I don't diet whatsoever. Different for you. You, you. I mean, if I don't know what your specific goals are, but for me, I, I realized cutting these things back, it created so much more structure in the rest of my life. Yeah. Like, even mentally, just being more, just more attuned to like, okay, I'm going to show up at this time. I'm going to be awake at this time. Like everything just started to be a lot more like, I felt more like a machine and I like that. And I miss that. Yeah. I miss that feeling where I was like, this is what I'm doing. And I, in two hours, I know I'm eating again in two hours. I know I'm eating again because I'm, I'm dieting. Like, yeah. Before, like, I'm eating big ass meals and then fucking hopping you know. on a private jet with Steve. Yeah. And then, going like, to fucking but gamble, also you're, like, you're, you're, you got an opportunity like here. This? What'd you say? You're new to being like the way you are now. Uh, this is the last like four weeks. I've been like, okay, I'm gonna get fucking shredded. I'm normally like around this, but not, okay. not like this. The where I'm going, probably in the next few months, I'm gonna probably look like that. I've never looked like. Yeah, I but promise. It's all about how like you balance it out, the discipline. Because if you get offered that private jet to Miami or Vegas, and you're gonna go out to Carboni and Italian meals and all this stuff, you're gonna get thrown off. Are you gonna miss out on that opportunity that could further you in the business, or are you yeah. gonna stay focused on your body? You know, what do you do there? You get- I know that I can do both now. Okay. So, so push-ups on the jet? No. So it's like you just got to you gotta say no to the alcohol, even mm-hmm. though today I'm filming this video. like, But it's once a week. I, if mm-hmm. I did this three days in a row, I know I'm making mistakes. Yeah. Right? And then when it comes to the food, I know that I can make choices even at restaurants that are like I could, if I talk to the person, I say, hey, I need you to make it like this, especially at like a fancy restaurant. Yeah. It's easier. Obviously, it's more expensive. But to be like, yeah, I want this and this and that. Only. Some asparagus and a tilapia. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's my question. Yeah. What do you eat when you go out to restaurants? Steak. Steak. Normally steak and like some like broccoli or something date? like that. And I'll say like, hey, don't put butter on it. Don't put, you know. You tell just, them that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because then I know. Don't at cook least, it. Yeah, just fucking just put fucking that shit in their saute <laughs> real quick and then I'll fucking eat it raw. How does it taste when you go to restaurants and they don't put the butter on it? It's not. It's. I mean, dude, it's <laughs> fucking. It's different. It's a whole different experience. It's like you could have had the fucking filet mignon like medium well with like the butter. It's dripping. I would have been like, oh my yeah, god, it's amazing. Doing what you're doing. Yeah, do it. Because I eat some restaurants. Every he night. just got an offer. A friend of his bet him a hundred grand to get down to like a ridiculous, like it was old fighting weight. What's your weight right now? Don't get on the scale anymore. Make it <laughs> Fork the scale. <laughs> fork the scale, lad. Yeah, right? Fork the scale. What's about 100K? Why would you not do that? You got to do that. I am. We're, we're, yeah, probably going to do it. Yeah. You got to do it. That's easy money. Yeah. I have to lose like 40 pounds. Easy money. And you he's. Think I can lose 40 pounds. What's that? You think I can lose 40 pounds? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. See me when I was boxing. I 
it was terrible on the diet. I yeah. regret it now in life. Not being as good on your diet. I never used to eat. I never used to drink water. I used to starve myself and run twice a day on a treadmill for 50 minutes. It's so interesting because, like, that would, it's obviously, like, I don't know how I've done it. And now counterproductive. I drink a gallon yeah. of water yeah. every day. It's and like, it obviously, technically, life. you could be a good fighter no matter what because you, you know it. But, like, your brain not functioning the way that it can because you're not drinking He's enough water. He's from a different land, though. It's so crazy. Liverpool, you I see regret. Molly the meatball with that spinning elbow. They're I just, mean, they're fucking, they what just are you living off of? pressure. Like? They're like fucking Stupid. pit bulls over there the way they fight. I regret, like, things I regret now, like, about when I was just fighting. Nutrition. I would have been way better off, you know, when I was further in the game, you know? Yeah. That's one regret I got is the diet. Diet's the biggest thing, man. The biggest like, thing I've I don't diet at all. I eat whatever I want, but I do intermittent you're, fasting, you're, so I don't eat until a certain part of the day. What do you think but of then that? I do whatever the fuck fasting? I want. Intermittent oh, fasting? Yeah. I think it's amazing. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I didn't even do it so on you, purpose. You think it's good then? Yeah. I think it's it's how I've eaten like my whole life so, on so, on accident. So I was with yeah, you. same. Yeah, I'm, I'm just you. not hungry. I'll have a black coffee and I'm not hungry. If I drink enough water and stuff, I do my run and and I'm so busy during the day with just calls and and shooting and yeah. like workouts. I'll ran, I live right by Runyon, so I'll randomly just burst out and just run straight to Runyon and just you know do the whole thing and come back and you know it's just how often that, do you work out? I do run in every day. I'll run at least like four or five miles every day, at least like five, you six days a week. You run four or five miles every day. Yeah. Your cardio is great. Though. I'll do. He's a good runner. I'll do probably like, sometimes on Saturdays, I'll do a long run at the beach. I'll do like a 10 miler. On and he the rides sand? the bike. No, on the path, on the bike path. And then the, the bikers, they take that bike path shit personal. Yeah, get the fuck out of the so way. So they'll fucking yell at you and I want to yell shit and back. you bring but I'm, gloves I'm, and you're like, I'm, bet, yeah, I'm I'll gassed. fight you, pussy. <laughs> right? Yeah, well, he's on a bike too. So okay. they don't know that I got a sleeper out there in front of me talking yeah, shit back too. Idea. He's blasting G unit. We got a guy in spandex <laughs> that comes by and he's like, bike lane, get the fuck out. And we're like, Liam, stop that guy. Fucking we'll square up, down. pussy. So what do you think of the fasting then? Tell us about that. I think it's amazing, man. I yeah. think this is the thing. Fasting for me, like I said, is the thing that I did my entire life without trying. It's just like you said, I, I never woke up super hungry. So I was never like, man, I really need to eat. I always noticed I was always most hungry after like an actually good workout. Mm -hmm. So I would just always start eating after my workouts when without you, without this was because this is the thing. Like you say intermittent fasting and people know about it like, oh, that's a thing I'm talking about. This is like, fuck, man. How many years ago did I start? I was 12 when I like, was like, oh, this right. is how I'm eating because I'm just not hungry. Like I didn't do it on purpose. I'm saying it was just how my life yeah, was. And then, OK, question. Yeah. You, you eat six times a day. So. So there's, like I said, before this moment where I'm like, okay, I'm dieting. Sometimes I eat three times and a few snacks. Yeah, but with the fasting, how would you do that over 26 hours? So when I was like, okay, I'm really doing this shit and I'm like trying to be consistent with it. You'd have a certain time period where which I would eat and a certain time period which I wouldn't eat. Right. So if like I'm like fasting for, let's say, 16 hours and so 24 hours in a day. So the rest of the time I'm eating, obviously not too close so to you bedtime. Do eight hours to eat. Yeah. So I was with someone yesterday. And he was telling me he does uh, 16, 18 hours and six where he eats. But he eats whatever he wants. He whatever wants. he wants. Some people do 24 yeah, hours. I mean, he's Some in people. unbelievable shit. I'm a fucking terrible name. But it was Mark Wahlberg who was telling me yesterday. Uh, he eats whatever he wants. He says he's, he's been eating whatever he wants. He's fucking ripped the fuck as well. Yeah. He, he went up to 210, he was telling me, for a movie. But he just dropped down to 170. He's at 170 right now, but he's... He said he feels great though. He wakes up at four a.m. Yeah, that's good, but he eats whatever. Like I'm talking Did about, he, like he's candy and shit. So they have the glass of wine. There's no way he's eating pasta. candy. What? There's I, no I, way I, he's no, eating no, candy. But I'm saying, like, uh, I know. eat a ton of candy. Really? Does, yeah. He yeah. Does. What yeah. the fuck? I got my places all candy. I don't I have any food in my house you. for candy. I want you to write the diet out for me. I will. I'll do it. You'll be a fucking fucking. How many weeks does it take? To Forty you pounds. No, Can no, we come no, train at your gym? Like, Absolutely. What the you, fuck? Uh, so it's it's all like weightlifting stuff or you have your own setup like um It's a full gym. Yeah. And then I'm opening a gym. I'm moving my current gym membership base to a bigger gym in Encino in the next like five months to a brand new gym, brand new everything. Yeah. And I'm keeping my original gym only for trainers. So trainers are gonna come in and train their clients and just pay to train their clients there. And then also I'm gonna Within that space, I'll hold like seminars and things to teach trainers like how to because I was a trainer for eight years before I, w I was ever doing any social media stuff. Yeah. Full on. Like you were a barber. Yeah. I was a trainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My whole life from the minute that I besides I was like a, I worked at Quiznos and then I was like a kids camp counselor helping kids like we're like 
Yeah, and no, I worked at a, a. She goes, "What?" I was a kids camp counselor. I worked at a, a primetime athletic club in uh, Millbrae, I think it was called. Yeah. That had to be fun. It was work, so much fun with working with kids. So much fun, like yeah. the most fun. And then I started training. And in my whole life, I was a trainer. Imagine just all this shit was done and you were just uh, like, I'm going to be a PE teacher. Dude, I'd love that. That'd be sick, right? Yeah, kids are the best. Like just That's straight up future, Kenny man. Power style. I would just oh be cursing Oh my God, I am so <laughs> glad you know who the fuck Kenny Power uh, is. Oh, he's found down? That's how I know. <laughs> that inspired. It, this it, is it, how it, I know. I like your comedy I now. Mean, look, look at me. Oh my God. You know, I'm not trying to be the best at working out. <laughs> I'll fucking get up and beat the shit out of somebody, but Dude, I'm going to try to be best at going to the That's, gym. <laughs> Have you seen the Righteous Gemstones? No, oh, yeah, it's great. Okay, good, good, good. So yeah, no, I, 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 I was a trainer my whole life. So, anyways, the point is, I was trying to make was I'm moving the gym, the existing gym membership base to a much bigger location because we had parking problems, and now the original location I'm going to keep as a trainer only gym, and I'm also going to help those trainers who come to that gym build their business in person, like learning how to sell, sell better. And then also build their online business as well, nice. which is where's obviously what now? I've done. Where, where it's right down the street. So it's in Woodland Hills. My okay. gym now, it's Sioux Culture. It's in Woodland Hills, 6455 DeSoto Avenue. Uh, yeah. Do you have is a boxing ring in there? there? No. But an octagon? A no, mat? No. Are you going to put any of that in? So the existing gym, we're going to create the front space is going to be more like matted area because we're going to get rid of like a little bit of like the, you know, there was a TV, there's a TV there now and like a couch that we're going to get rid of. But the new gym is not going to have that yet. That's yeah. all that matters. We know it's coming. Yes, it's coming. But this guy, so he's been training me now on and off because, you know, the surgeries and shit like that. But we've been training on and off, hanging out. And I'll just have like these wacky ideas where I'm like, I'm on Amazon uh, on sleeping pills at fucking 2 a.m. And I'll buy like shin guards and MMA gear. And then I'll come into the boxing gym. And he, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I want to try out these kicks. I fucking watched a YouTube video last night. And then we're just going at it. He puts on the body pad, but it's not. It's for body shots and boxing. Yeah. So I'm kicking at him, and some of the kicks are slipping. He's getting hit in the nuts. He's getting hit in the chin with a foot and a shin right That's off dope. his chin. And he's like, uh, I'm like, sorry, sorry. He's like, don't, don't fucking say sorry. Hit me again. Yeah, <laughs> and don't I'm be like, a pussy. We're just like, you know, we're figuring it out. We're having fun with so our do workouts. You want, do you want to try to fight someone eventually? I mean, I, I, my priority is vision. Get the Vision, eye very healed. Important. Yeah, no, that's and great. And yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, but I. He's yeah. gonna fight. What's yeah, that? He's gonna fight. Yeah? yeah, I like how he says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, give me one. I really gotta pee right now. I'm fucking go for dying. It. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. okay. Wait, wait, you gotta we'll take pee. a piss break. So Let's go, do it together. Go. Justice for the ninety seven. Justice. We were doing some Liverpool chants on the way over. Some Liverpool? Are you? You're not from Liverpool? No, right? okay. no, no, no. I just we just been watching Patty the Batty and UFC and stuff like yeah. that. We got all fired up from it. I was last supposed week. to go to that fucking thing, but they in were the like, UK, yeah. Oh damn, that would have been nice. But then we didn't. It, it's, it, it is, is what it is. Did you yeah. travel a lot then? Yeah, lately I've been traveling a ton. I'm about to go to Miami. I'm two in days. Miami all the time. Winter music yeah. conference? <laughs> no, just going to fucking fuck around with Steve. Film oh, okay. Content, have fun. Give away Probably Rolexes can. to rappers. Ask give away can stuff. Can he give me a Rolex? Give you, can he give you a Rolex? <laughs> I mean, I could ask him. I could ask him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be like specifically, yo, check out this podcast. Liam and Jeff asked for Rolex. Hear me out. Presidential. Yeah, you want the presidential? Okay, presidential, we'll Steve. Now, if you can get one from the Rolex, you'll get a lifetime myself. supply of haircuts. He yeah, probably, he probably has a great barber already in Miami. Yeah, um, good, we'll good, we'll give you something. Really good barber, actually. Yeah, in Miami, we one yeah. of the best barbers. Uh, honestly, shout out that guy. Uh, he's actually incredible. Uh, shout out to that guy But I need I you mean, to cut I, my hair I need you to cut my hair What do you go bald? No I go like I go like uh, um, How many hats you own? A thousand Do you Let's have a thousand man. actually? A like, thousand like hats Like 900, 900 plus? 997 probably Do you lay them out on the wall? Like do you put the nails in like the frat boy shit? <laughs> no You know what I'm saying? No. I did that You know what, happens with, a lot, of that you know what happens with a lot of my hats? They end up just getting dirty, and I end up like I, I feel I feel up. bad. Eventually, I throw them away. And you I got just a graveyard get, of hats back here buried. No, I, I'm grateful. Obviously, that I have a clothing company, and I just get new ones because it seems like every few months I have a brand new one. Yeah, you just got two new ones right now yes, too. Yeah, that's, I don't that's mean right. to keep plugging it, but I'm but, just saying. No, you know, but now I do. You got nine. Now you have actually nine ninety nine. I have a thousand now. And you just hit a thousand. Yeah, but I but you do day. cut beards though too. I mean, yeah, I can do whatever. You know. Can you really though? Yeah, cut, of course. Like, yeah. can you line up and all that? Hell yeah! He's really good. Yeah. Like, actually, course. no bullshit. 
No, like, bro, that's up, like cut. me asking you if you could bench press two plates. Like, you really do this shit. Fucking, of course, when okay. I was 16. So you, so you, I really do want to do, a, I want to do a video or something where you're actually cutting I'll my bring beard. in the barbershop. Dude, I funny. love that. Yeah, we'll do a bald edition. It'll be you and Jeff Bezos co-hosting. Me and Jeff <laughs> And then we can all fight Royal Rumble after. At the end, dude. You versus it. me and Jeff. You versus the Jeffs. Both the Jeffs? Winner gets my Instagram handle. Fuck. At the same time, right? Yeah. It'd be like a, yeah, Royal yeah Royal. well, we would need an advantage. So just you throw would. throw me Jeff. Yeah. You know, he's been juicing up. So if you were to realistically fight an influencer, who would it be? Um, It's tough. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds. You not know? at all. Because you got to be motivated by something like, why the fuck would I just fight this of guy? Of course. I actually, we had a plan. I don't know if I should re reveal this here, but we could always check back in the edit. We we're going to go down to Tijuana. I was going to dye you, my hair blonde. Okay, wait a sec. Go in fake name, alias. We get a guy that's actually a fighter, maybe a 115 record, you know? Okay. Just go in there, just get a can, get the first one in, and nobody knows it's me. I'll go by like Diego Rodriguez or something, okay. you know? And then... Uh, and then I don't know. I got it in. I'll see how I feel after. But he called Mac Broom out a while ago, but he went. And then, yeah, I called out a bunch of people. And it was Austin, just tough. we're talking about Austin. Yeah, people yeah. think I'm a nut job. Like I don't understand. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I look tiny on, on camera. You thought I was like what, one thirty? You look skinny. You don't look tiny. You look tall. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't. I just don't get it. I couldn't get a fight at the time. And then um, I Dubs put this thing together. I wanted to do it so bad, but it's like. I got this fucking all this legal shit going on. I got multiple surgeries. I cannot have a flyer with me like this. I'm about to fight. And then like my doctor's like, I'm doing yeah. the fuck are you oh, doing? I'm yeah, doing yeah, surgery yeah. on you next week. Yeah, you, you can't know? do it. So I just got to wait till the right time and I'll get back into it. But right now I'm just fucking around having fun. I love training. I love just, you know, it's so much more fun for me to do that type of training. Like just we'll like have some sparring days, just light stuff. Not trying How to kill each other. How often do you train like that? Um, when we're in like we call it training camp. Training camp. Yeah, in camp. We're training seven days <laughs> right now. Week for a minute. Yeah, we each, we'll train now. Like I'll do my runs and I could check in with him. Like, yeah, I, I just ran. I hit a we run. Were, we I got a podcast in a little bit. Seven days a week, right? We were training seven days a week. Yeah. Six, six days like right? hands striking. You would have what? to boxing. I'm, you know, I'm uh, boxing. Bo I'm boxing I'm only. I just bought the shin guards on Ambien just the other night. Around. Just to fuck around. On Ambien. Yeah, and we were having so much fun with them. Have you ever he taken Ambien and tried to just stay up? Yeah, of course. It's fucking <laughs> it's crazy. terrible. I'm not recommending this, by the no, way. No, no, especially if you got a social media. You yeah, know, cause it's, you might do some shit. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Have you ever taken Ambien and tried to stay up? I won't take Ambien. Oh, no? Well, Nothing ever? No. no I, I legit had, like, a sleeping problem. I went to see, like, psychiatrists oh, okay. and stuff, and they're like, yeah, you can't turn your brain off. You're too smart, too creative. Damn. Your brain just wheels keep turning, turning. Damn. No, they didn't say that. They just said, yeah, you got to fucking be like, well, you got to exactly. try drugs? this out. What's that? Do you do a lot of drugs? No, no. <laughs> Bad, really? No. What? I oh, don't you do a lot of drugs. You got a mic over there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, chime in more. No, no, no. You got no, any no, no. questions? I, 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 I like mushrooms. Okay. Yeah. Small amounts. Though. Mike Tyson. Have you had the ayahuasca? I haven't done that yet. That one I'm not ready for yet. How old are you? 30. I'm going to be 33 in like two months. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So in like two months, yeah, May twenty second is my birthday. It's about time. I, I I do plan on doing that. I people haven't done it. Like, I don't even. Who I've spoke to, people say it's the best. I would never do it, but like Mike Tyson does the toad every day. He told me. He does toad the what? every he day. The toad every day. He told that me. toad don't run out. The toad. You talking about? So that's uh, he licks a toad. What's that combine? Shit. That doesn't hit you as. Uh, so I guess ayahuasca hits you for a longer period. I guess I don't know how the toad. Works. Yeah. Have you ever imagine have you, you have this little pet toad that you lick every day? I don't know how it works. He told me like he said he licks a toad. I don't know how it works. No, I don't, I have no idea. He said he, he just said I do the toad. Where day. do you get these toads? I, don't I think it's a, combine. He's got, a, he's got a farm in them. I think. I he's think that's a, a drug. Combine. combine, combine. So there's not an actual toad. You just get the. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I thought you would know. You a fact checker it. back there? Yeah, you can like, we do we do we have any of that? Can you Google that real quick? Because no, I'm actually really, really right interested now. now, and it's gonna fuck me no, up. If I don't know yeah. toad, can we Amazon these toads? The, the, yeah. toad, the toads don't. It's like didn't hit you for as long. Where Quicker. They, yeah, I don't know how it works, but <laughs> the ayahuasca. What kind of fucking toads like are you licking, dude? Three, three you know, days. you know, he's it's the, the reason that the venom in the toad. The venom in the toad. He's the reason that Tyson got back in and fought recently. He got back no. in shape. He walked in a wild card. There's proof for it. You know, I, I, I don't lie. This is raw talk. Yeah, he called. He went up to Tyson. He said, "What the fuck you doing, lad? You I don't look, think this you is look true. like shit." And no, Tyson called him. 
We'll send you the clip. You can play it. Are in you here. dead serious? Yeah. No. He keeps it real. Fucking with me. He keeps it raw. He keeps it real. You he know. Says it on the, he told the Tyson, Logan the show. scariest motherfucker in the world, and he's like, he's like. Uh, you pulled up to him. You said what? You look like shit. Together? I've known Mike for a long time. I mean, really? Ten years. Yeah, I mean. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, so he took that, you know, like that goes a long way. He Sometimes me you up. I didn't even know about it, to be honest. He called me up. I was in Miami. I think it was with you in Miami. He FaceTimed me. He'd been trying to get hold of me. He go. He's like, you motherfucker. You. And he kept calling him N word. And he's like, you got me in shape. You made me make thirty million dollars and stuff. And Liam's like, really? And Liam's like, really? You know, like he's like, he didn't understand it. But yeah, it goes a long way. Insulting someone. Can no, go a long good. way. Yeah, you look really as fucking a, as a trainer. skinny. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fucking come back jack shit, next dude. time. Well, I'm gonna be <laughs> curling weights on no, the next podcast on the way here. We were training and he got up to 170. Because what's your body weight right now? 165. 165. Got Embarrassing, pathetic, huh? You were way back. Then. No, no, I was, was in a hospital bed weight. three weeks no, ago. No, 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 no. When we were training. Yeah. It, body, everything. He was eating good and. I was eating a lot of steaks Every steaks. hour he would text me Eat a steak Eat a steak lad and I'm like I got steak What'd Coming out of my steak? ears Steak's amazing What? Steak's you asked me What do I think about steaks? <laughs> no, oh my god steak. I love steak I, I, Before the fight The night before I was have a steak Good steak off a steak Yeah fuck yeah I, Steaks are amazing in steak. I eat tons of steak Yeah I mean, I'm, just, I'm not a vegan I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm lie a, I'm not a vegan either Not I'm at all fucking No vegan. So okay We're talking about fighting I know you you didn't pick anyone But if you could pick The perfect fight Obviously not David Dobrik If you could fight anyone Who would it be? If you're like Perfect conditions You're good Fucking What's Francis Ngannou doing right now? He's on, <laughs> He just had knee surgery So he's Shut off the, the list <laughs> I don't know Shut bro. the fuck up I don't know There's no point of me Calling anybody out right now Because I have to go through This uh, like this eye shit So I don't want to get excited Because it's one of my dreams It's something I want to do so bad That like why you really even, want to yeah why waste yeah. time like why why you know get in talks now like yeah. at the time i didn't know i was gonna need surgery so i was like oh mcbroom through this shit event fuck him let's go after him he's the I bad guy we could have good shit talk good banter it'll motivate me to like i'll be excited i'll make videos on it yeah. but like what's the point now you know yeah i'll just work on like you gotta wait for this shit i can't rush it i'm taking i'm fucking shooting myself with needles to heal faster yeah. and what motivates you the most right now um well Everything. These really motivate me. The products, the brand, stuff. the content, you know, the fans. I get a lot of positive messages and, and you know, letting pe people letting me know that, like, me going through documenting the progress, being open, being vulnerable, that helps them a lot. So, yeah, my goal right now is just, like, I went through a lot of shit that gave me a different outlook on life. Yeah. So I, I want to share that, like, yeah, even, you know, I go through a lot of mental health stuff. I. I cried in my documentary. I wanted to cut it. My team, they were like, no, we need to fucking show emotion. You need to leave this I in. cry all the time, dude. Yeah. I don't care yeah. about that. It's part of life, you know? Before before this stuff happened to you, what motivated you the most? Like, on your come up. Um, sh what motiv motivated me to work out? Or No, just to make content. To like, whatever was, what, what was driving you forward? Oh, well, I had dreams to just be... In the business but i thought it would be more traditional as like an actor or something like that like yeah. i would just do gangster roles like i would play like a ryan gosling and drive and just you know run. i could see that though i could see that though thanks yeah that was the plan but just social media took over and it's just so time consuming and it is fun you know because it's i get so to be fun. my own boss i get to make my own hours yeah which is a blessing and a curse because sometimes you could you know push things and whatever but um yeah that is the goal i would like to get back to doing stuff like that but i also i also wrote a show um, it's a scripted show, but also like a kind of like a righteous gemstones, bro. Um, that shit is so funny to me. But it's uh, I don't know how much I, I want to give away there, but it's give on, a little. You got to give a little. It, it's on. So like you know, Boardwalk Empire is on the prohibition of like alcohol. Right. So right now we're in that with weed. It's becoming legal in most states. Like yes, it's like a gray area in some, but it's basically just become legalized throughout our lives. You know, it's yeah. become more acceptable. And there's a lot of situations that myself and my friends have gotten into that would make a great Breaking Bad style yeah, comedy. Which is so also. crazy. Think about the people who are probably still in jail and like for selling weed, which is like it's so legal now. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the craziest things, actually. Yeah. Kim Kardashian is trying to get a lot of them out. 
Yeah, it's, it's just such a weird thing, like how they they her and her organization. They whatever. like they like demonized it, and now it's like it's so completely okay now. I'd like to do that. I would like to go get them out of jail, like do like a comedy show in jail, like Johnny Cash, like when he went in there and played, <laughs> yeah. and we could just go in there and maybe host a boxing event or do a comedy in jail. Show. Yeah, host a boxing event. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get a couple influencers in there, you know, give them a show. <laughs> Who the fuck would go in there and fight? <laughs> I don't know. They, they'll fight each other. They don't give a fuck. No, no. They, which influencers would actually go in there and fight? Oh, you can get Jake Paul in there. Obviously, he'll go right? into jail. Yeah, yeah Jake would. Paul would go Jake into jail. Jake Paul would do it. Um, you'd go in. You'd I'd go, go in. into jail. Fuck it. <laughs> we got a team of Ross four right yeah, here. Yeah, I'm ready. Would you have a fight? I would, yeah. But who do you find? Because now, street? like, your weight class. You know, what are you going to go against? Right. Thor, that big giant? Yeah, I'm 260. You have 250 to, right you now. you get in a lot of fights on the street? No, not now. When I was younger, I got into fights. Yeah. Not now. Definitely not at this state. Maybe, oh, yeah, man. But you get, like, years, you get people, years like, challenge you, hey, you big fucking dickhead. I mean, sometimes you go out and, like, <laughs> you big you know, fucking dickhead. Yeah, like, I this is, I see what you're saying. Man, like, like, more when I was around, like, I want to say 220, so, like, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Like, if you go out, like, yeah, you get someone to be no, like. No, I mean, now as you. No, now, now, like now I think now people are just like, oh, you're that fucking guy. And they're yeah. like, what's up? So it's not as. Now most people are like, can I get a picture with you oh, okay. if I go to bars, right? Back before people knew who I was, yeah, of course you get people who like, who. It was just, it was almost like a, just some bullshit challenge. Like, just trying to kind of challenge you. Yeah, a no, bit. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, but now none, none of that. Now it's more like, let me get a fucking photo. But it's yeah. also like it's and a blessing and a curse because a lot of people won't fuck with you because they just look at you and they're like, look at the size of this guy. He's a fucking mountain. I, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not going to even entertain it. And it's it. not even that like, you know, obviously being big doesn't mean you can necessarily fight, but it's like mm -hmm. you could yeah. probably inflict, inflict more damage. Did you ever a bouncer? No, never. Never. Yeah, no. Yeah. no? No. I would have guessed maybe you no. did for so a couple months. Yeah. No, never. You, but you worked at a, a sandwich shop? Over no. So I worked at Quiznos. That was my very first job. I had a worker's permit. I was 15. Okay. And so I, 15 year old what? Two oh. 20? <laughs> no, not even close, dude. I was like your fucking weight. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was legit. I'm that's sorry. A, no, sorry. That's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Back I was sorry. Little backhand. It was good. Was no, that was that was a quality backhand yeah, yeah. fucking. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Just, so I was your weight when yeah. I was 15. Um no. <laughs> I think I'm my weight when I was 15 right now. I think I'm the same weight. Yeah, no. I, I, bro, the, the quiz story is actually pretty funny. I remember I how I quit that job. I'm gonna tell you the story. So the lady who owned it was always like, you can only make sandwiches. Cause like, you know, obviously they don't want you eating all their food. Right? Yeah, yeah. So when you're on break, you can make sandwiches that were like this big. You leave with pockets full of turkey. No, I would stuff. always make my sandwich like the fucking the <laughs> yeah, full foot long. Yeah. And I'd load that bitch up and she would always get mad at me. And I remember one day I'm in the back washing dishes. Cause I always just made me wash dishes. Yeah. And I was like 15 and be like, fuck this job. And I walked out <laughs> and yeah, it's just funny. And then I was like, yeah, like I said, uh, I was a, I was a kid's camp, uh, you know, instructor prior to that, like just at the same time I was like teaching kids how to swim and then I became a trainer. Nice. Oh, you taught kids how to swim. Yeah. Did you ever teach the babies? Yeah. Little, you know, I'm talking about throw, babies. They fling exactly. the baby in. Are you a good swimmer? I'm a great swimmer. I didn't throw babies you in throw the water. A baby in the water? No, no bro. My parents... sister did this to her daughter cause she's a nut. She lives in Kentucky and she has a, a lake in on her property. She trains racehorses and. She wanted the kid just in case the kid fell into the lake that she was able to swim. But it was like a baby, a one year old baby yeah. that they throw in and they have to like float up and learn how to how to not die. Yeah. And it exactly. takes a long process and it's terrifying because you're like you're throwing this your newborn baby. My fucking yeah. niece. No, is this underwater. this to me was just like they were like, I don't know, like four year olds, like where they're just like you tell them to reach for the stars. I remember they're like holding on to the side and then like going like this. And I was teaching little Damn, kids. How what to a swim. different lifestyle. So you're a good yeah. swimmer. Yeah. yeah, I'm a great swimmer. But the uh, see where you use so much muscle is that, Well I mean it's just I, 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 It's endurance right Like I'm still a very good swimmer But obviously my endurance is not there right okay. Like I can't go as many laps as I could Without yeah. taking a break But you could blast through a 50 yard Fuck yeah Yeah Super damn. fast I know some one of, one of my athletes for raw gear Was like I'll beat you in a race Because like he was a swimmer I was like You know he's shorter It's like and I'm like, bro, I will fucking dominate you. <laughs> I told swim. you we were going to do a, like a, a 10 part physical competition thing where some things benefit it. So I take swimming off the list. It's not. Yeah, on, I keep it's not swimming involved. on it. No, but but no. what did you say the other day? The other thing that we were going to do that I could um, not do. I don't remember. I was just bullshitting. Running. On the phone. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Just running. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's easy. Oh, How damn. many push ups can you do today? It's got to be 100 plus something. Yeah, damn, you got me. <laughs> you got yeah. me there. Good yeah. ones, though. Yeah. I well, don't do pussy ones. Show me one. 
Show you one right now. Just do them all. Oh, God damn it, dude. I like this guy, though. I can't even fucking lie. (laughs) Yeah, he's good, huh? He motivates you in a different way than a traditional trainer. Yeah, of course. No, because a lot of people like your size don't really... Yeah, I mean, with pussy. arms like you, they do the... Uh, Their arms are shorter, yeah, so little they're pussy. just like... Yeah, 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 little pussy ones. No, that's not me, man. Okay. I do full, long no, range of motion. I respect yeah. that form. That long range of motion, us. yeah. A hundred plus of those. Those strong men, right? For sure. A decent endurance in that, because, I mean, that's the one, like, you know, it's a gym, it's a classic gym bro move. Bench press. Yeah. How much you bench? I fucking haven't touched a bench press in... Really? Years. I feel yeah. like I feel like benching is, like, the, the I least... I could do two plates, like, once... Well, that's that's actually amazing though for your body. That's pretty good. Yeah. I've never yeah. benched in my life. I've never See, this is what I was gonna say before he said that. Benching is like the last thing fighters do. It seems you don't need it. You don't need yeah. chest to just I've extra never, muscle I never unnecessary. Really lift, I only started lifting weights not long ago, a few months ago. So how I long? Only do curls. It's all, it <laughs> it's all lat. It's all back, and the power comes from your legs and, and hip. shoulder. Yeah, hips. And hip. I do you don't need the chest for really for that. anything unless you want to just bench press your friend for yeah. competition. So how long you been fighting for? Or go to the beach and look fucking dope. It does look good, you know. Yeah. What? Twenty years. I mean, Twenty I'm years. Retired now. No, I get, it, I get it. I mean, I train every day still. But you fought? Did you fight for twenty years? No, I'm no. I mean, ten years. No more. It, yeah, probably actually. Yeah, from the age of ten till I was twenty six. Would you have a fight in in the bathroom at school? I mean, as a kid, the amateur fighter I was fighting at ten, eleven. You remember the, the kid's name? You remember his name? Williams, the last William. name. William. <laughs> William. The last name. Did you ever beat up any bullies in high school? No, I never got into I don't get into fights. Yeah. I think they probably knew People that he say, is, you like know, that's a not the fighter. guy to fight. No, yeah. I'm, uh, you you watch People Euphoria? No. Uh, okay. No, sorry, question. guys. No, but the little kid in there, Ashtray, that dies at the end, spoiler alert, put that after, spoiler alert. Um, yes. He is actually a fighter too, and he's like a young kid. He's acting and fighting. I doubt kids are fucking with him, you know. How old is that kid? He must be like thirteen, but you know, like imagine you're already Damn, a that pro kid's fighter. Popping though, they're yeah. probably not fighting him because they're also like that's the kid in Euphoria. Though. And I mean, like, kid, and he's got hands, and he's got like he could be, you know, he might be really end up being really good. You're so young, you know. Imagine training that early in yeah. high school. That'd be great. I wish I had that confidence. What yeah. what. Do, what for fighting do you think are the most important like workouts besides fighting besides striking besides Sprint those running, sprinting, sprinting. jump roping it's a lot of it's up on your toes i mean other than the, the box of workout, course yeah because that's i'm a big believer sprints yeah like I hill mean, sprints gotta, yeah hills like not every day but like under other meter sprints how many say if i'm gonna do a sprint like, workout like, i uh 20 but, sprints so you know the Klitschko brothers? Yes, of course. They used to do, like Freddie Roach saying them, they do 12, 800 under, under a minute each one. They do no, 12. No, that's impossible, bro. That's, that's Wait, not whoa. Even, that's 800 not. meters? Yeah. No. Yeah. 12. Wait there, what was it they used to do? Roach I think you're mixing Roach. up 400 meters. I think 400 no. meters is one lap around the track. You could do that in a minute. 400 then. They used to do 12 with a minute rest. In between each one. Four hundred, yeah. hundreds. Yeah. Okay, that's that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Something stupid. This is our track workout. Do. This is what we we would do. Um, so we would do three miles at the track. We would do start off with a one mile warm up. I'm gonna come I, do this with you. I would aim to get I'm that. Die. I would aim to get that mile down to. I think the fastest I ran a mile was five t- five fifteen. Something, something like, like that. that, yeah. Five fifteen. Where it was like he was a, in really good shape here when you were doing this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a good time. That was probably day. like eight months ago or six months ago or something. Oh, no, no, probably five months ago. ago. Five fifteen for a mile. Yeah, so that was the, the warm up, but I would push it just because I want to get that fucking uh, on my Nike app. I want to just like try to break my own record because yeah. I'm sick in the head. And then we would do four four hundreds, and those start to fucking hurt yeah, after a while. There are four hundreds. It was with. Because you're trying to aim for that. You're trying to aim for that minute mark every time. You know, like minute, a minute maybe minute, one. minute ten in that area, and then you do the hundred meter sprints. And the hundred meter sprints running? suck. Um, great at sprinting. I'm terrible at endurance. Oh, so really? it's like I'm doing a few, and I'm like, yo, give you me a minute. You carry so much more weight. Yeah. yeah. But all I'm fast. People, for sure. All people have the same. I don't know if people know this, but price. yeah. But all people have the same size heart. You know, like mine's probably a little bigger, but yeah. Yeah, but honestly, is it that much? Bigger? I don't know. Because your heart has to supply blood to your whole body, which is way more of a body than like the average person. Yeah. 
So, you know, it's tough for big guys. You don't see heavyweights. And even when they're elite athletes, they're not going to last five rounds of fucking just full pressure the whole time. Yeah. It's tougher for big guys. No. You're the same. This is the organ that's going to keep you. This uh-huh. is cardio. Tyson Fury moves for 12 rounds. So yeah, that you know, guy's fucking insane guy. to me. He's 275 or yeah. 273, whatever he is. You see the way he moves for a guy that big for 12 rounds? That's unbelievable. Well, that's why he's fucking like one of the goats, but, man. you know, mm-hmm. Mike Tyson in his early years, see how sharp and fast and explosive he was? Yeah. I mean, and he could do it. How much did he I weigh in his early years? 216, fine, wasn't he? My two, 216? Two Crazy. Yeah, tiny for a heavyweight. He's, yeah, but he's only my height, isn't he? Five he would five. have to fight Fury now, which would look so mis- mismatched. Oh the difference God. in you know, when people ask about, like, you think he could have? You think in the prime, they, who would have won? No, How do you think? I don't think you can say that anymore because the guys today are so much bigger than the guys 20 years ago. It's like them compared to Ali, they compare these guys. So much bigger than the guys back then, you know. Ali was probably one ninety. Yeah. You know what I mean? These are small guys compared to the guys today. Yeah, it's like a different. It's, it's like a, a whole a different, different thing. It's a whole different mean? league. Almost. Yeah, it's so. It's bizarre. like when you say like when people compare to Mayweather, like it's it's errors. You know what I mean? These yeah. guys. Are almost, I mean, Floyd Mayweather's the best I've ever seen in person as a fighter. Like watched live. I mean, he's an unbelievable fighter. Yeah. The, the crazy thing to me, uh, this is a true story, Liam, when uh, Tyson Fury's father held him and he was like, my he son will grow to be me. seven feet tall and be the heavyweight champion. I'm naming him after Mike Tyson. I'm naming him Tyson Fury. And then it happened. Did that really Tyson happen? Was a, is, that a, is that a true story? Suppose, Tyson was an immature. What is it when they're uh, born early? His name's Tyson. I mean, it sounds. What is it when you're born like so many months early? Premature. Yeah, you're premature. premature baby. He was like. So many six more or whatever. Six Tyson months. was. Yeah, Fury. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, he was a premature baby. Fuck, and they come out like a goddamn giant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Be one of the best boxers. But is that the big guy? Is that six two or six three or whatever? Is that wow, isn't he like that six, was a six, Tyson, six nine? Six nine. He's six nine. What the Tyson, fuck? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not a guy I'd want to fight, you know? <laughs> I'm like, fuck. Dude. I mean, you looking for an opponent? Those are uh, the guys you're gonna have to you, find. Six two. About six three, yeah. But I'm, I'm like. 250. No, yeah. I mean, but like, fuck, I would have to heavyweight, fight. bro. You'd have to fight in Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> nah, we'll find the right guy for you. Yeah. It's tough because, like, for me, like you say, it's like I, there's tons. I know I've seen people be like, I want to fight this guy, me. But it's like there's certain people that it just doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Where it's like the social thing, the whole like, it's yeah. got to make sense. Is there weight classes now? Are we doing that for YouTube? Well, boxing? there's like weight classes, but it's also like, is the person like, uh, you know, is there any heavyweights out there on YouTube? Or yeah, but it's like, fight? is it worth it? Meaning, like, is like the is the fight worth it? Right. It's be, it's all Meaning, like, the, it's all about the money at the end of the day, right? Right. So it's like, am I just am I just getting someone else money without like? That's are they what I said to him. He got offered the fight a while ago. He was it someone offered you a fight, right? Yeah, it was like Supreme Patties. And I, I was shit, like, and I, was I, like I, I said, don't take it. I'll do it. I mean, just because it's this weekend. Nah, and like, there's, there's, I was like, you know, like, I'll just pull up and not train. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we were already training. We were so I was training, like, I'll just fucking I mean. jump in it. And then he was like, they want to give you 10 grand up front and then 10 grand after. But and I was like, I don't I give a they, fuck about the money. My, it's just, it's I'll about the people money. On the, uh, like, I'll fight people on the beach. It, yeah. It, we're just, it's a, sp- a spar, I guess. But it's not. It's a show. It's an event. And you should. You 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 in this at the end of the day it's all about money. I yeah, don't well, fuck what anyone says. Right? No, of course we're talking about I, fighting. Every, yeah, I mean what you guys do, it's all Social. about the money at the end of the day. I yeah. mean you, yeah you want to fight, but I mean you want to get fucking paid for doing it too. Yeah, you yeah, because you got to take away you, from. You, you also don't, don't want to be the only so draw to a fight. You know what I'm saying? If That's you take what I'm that fight about. for ten grand, say, and people hear about <laughs> it, then who's gonna pay <laughs> yeah. you fucking two? Who's gonna pay you half a million if you got ten grand for fighting on one of them shows? Exactly. Well, this is saying? just like social in general. Like influencers taking like a fucking product I for trained, a post. Uh, who's the guy? Yeah. I trained Vinny Acha for a fight, and uh, he didn't. Well, get he pay, still hasn't been paid. paid, but he's all, he was getting seven hundred and fifty thousand for a fight. I mean, he still shocking. hasn't been paid. None mm. of them have. They owe me money, so. Whoever's out there getting these fucking paid. <laughs> How much they owe? How much they owe you? 50 grand the most. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, coaches get a, a fee of the purse. You. It's like a manager, you know? Is that where you camp. met him at that fight? No, I met him 10 years ago. Well, oh, I mean, tripping. we got speaking again at that fight, yeah. What yeah. the fuck? Because I remember you were there. You were filming that shit. He walked out with yeah. me. Yeah, why, why were you there so, like... Because he said, what the fuck you doing, Jeff? We need to get you in there. 
and I was like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll try it. I walked out with them, and it was fun. It was like a, a good experience, and I was like, I want this for myself so bad. But, yeah. There's... And then and then you tried to fight Austin, and like he was like, no. Yeah, and then the complications with the eye. I, I had to get some plates removed. There's like metal plates in there, so it's like not something that I wanted to fuck around with. But they just took one out, and they put in like two other ones that may come out soon. So it's healing. It's yeah. getting there. All right, so let's talk about girls. You okay. got any women in your life? Um, I went on a hike with a girl yesterday. It was nice. What's her Instagram? No. <laughs> she uh, she doesn't have one. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It really? Was, it was cool. Yeah. She doesn't have an Instagram. Yeah, it's rare That's nowadays. A lie. No, it's. I mean, maybe she lied to me. Yeah, I'm getting played. <laughs> no, I don't know. She Do you really she think she one. doesn't have one? Yeah. She said she didn't that? have one. So. What do you mean, Next thing you know, she's gonna find out she got OnlyFans and all this that? shit. At a party. Really? Yeah. You at a party? I'm just a while shocked ago. right now. I'm lying? <laughs> no, I don't, a while ago. Yeah, I did. Why would I lie? <laughs> I met her at fucking Whole Foods. Did you meet her at Whole Foods? I met her at party? Ralph's. No, I met her at a party. A social media party? Like, how'd you... No, it was a long time ago. It was like a year ago, but we kept in touch. Did she hit you up? Yeah. Did you I smash got her or not? I think I texted Did you smash her or not? I'm going to put that part <laughs> out. No. We just hiked. It was just a nice hike. That's all I wanted out of her. I got. <laughs> That's all you wanted. I wanted a nice body? walk in the park. No, no, not married. You have no. a girlfriend? Yeah, I got a girl. Yeah. Nice. Do you smash? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, hopefully. <laughs> Are there any girls that you that you you want to go after? Any any social people that you'd be like, yo, social what's people? Good? Yeah, what's I'd good? I like to fucking. In. I like to race Charlie Jordan. That's about it. Race you know? her. She's like fucking to, fast. I know dude. she'll smoke me. It'll be She's embarrassing. Really It'll ruin my career. Um, so definitely media don't. People? No, I don't have any like. Um, Specific social media people. Um, no, who's the you. who's the prostitute on Euphoria? Uh, she's she seems cool. She's all fucked in the head. Um, I, I need somebody that's a little mentally ill, so they under like we can relate and we can talk to each other about stuff like that. But um, what's your longest relationship? Three years. Oh shit, mine was eight. Oh yeah, before eight this years. one. Before this one, eight was years. you a cheetah? What's that? Did you cheat when you were no. in that relationship? No. Never? No, but you never we would, took a bachelor party trip with no, no, the boys no. so to, let me to be, let Cancun. Me, let me be clear. Like, we would, you know, the, that relationship, she would break up with me like every fucking three weeks okay, at so one you, point. So you, that was, that didn't count. The, yeah. The, those periods. Okay. Didn't count. Fair, now? fair enough. Huh? Do you speak to us though? Not at all. She hates you. Is she going to watch this? Probably. <laughs> Did she hate you? I think so. Damn, it's a little do you sad. Wanna, do you want to make it up? Do you want to make I, it right? She's amazing. She's an amazing person. I have no, like, I fucked, you know, I fucked that up very early on. And then it kind of, like, kept, mm -hmm. you know, we tug of war for so long. And yeah. this is what it is. Yeah. How is the relationship status now? What's now? Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And now it's amazing. I got no worries with that. You're going to get married, have kids and all this I'm stuff. I'm definitely going to have kids. I don't know. You know, you got to make sure. Are you going to put them on the sauce early? <sighs> no, definitely not. <laughs> there was this guy. He had a kid. And this guy was like the known Staten Island steroid dealer. This guy was like the juice guy. He would have scams. He would come in to. You remember when uh, Acai first came out? And it was like, this shit cures cancer. Yeah. So he would come in the barbershop with his Ponzi scheme and be like, I got this thing. We're going to sign you under me. And then, you know, it's, it's this fucking thing that these new berries, these magical berries that cure right. cancer. But he would also sell steroids. And then his son was like fucking, he put him on juice at like, <laughs> I think he was like eight what? or something, That's bro. fucking terrible. But now the kid's an animal, you know? <laughs> Wait, I don't want to say his name. Because, this is terrible, though. That's yeah. That's like horrible. As long as we censor his name. But now he's a, like a successful MMA fighter. And like, a, not UFC, but like, yeah, the kid actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. You said at what age? Like, actually, you're not even playing. I don't know. Maybe it was like 12 or some shit, but it was okay. like super early Either that he way, had him on like, like Anavar. One of those what things you said. I don't know if it was Tess. I, uh, nowadays, it's getting crazy because this whole TikTok shit and a lot of like, not so much juice, but a lot of kids are like talking about SARMs and all this other shit, which is yeah. like as equally as fucked as just taking yeah, steroids. Yeah, the stuff that the I said, shit. it doesn't mess with your nuts or nothing like that. You're, like your hair don't fall out. Like the things that I'm taking, stem cells and things like no, that. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm talking about SARMs, which is basically like taking fucking steroids. And it's it's becoming really popular because people talk about this shit a lot on like TikTok. Yeah. They're talking about their open with, openness with use. And so like kids will see it and be like, oh, I'm thinking about it now. And it's like, what? There's so much that comes along with it that you'd have to account for properly to be fucking healthy and i kids sarms sarms it's like a testosterone it's ba they're they're basically like 
I, I, it's it's not exactly the same thing. It's a different drug, but it's doing the same thing. Like in the okay. body, it's going to shut down your testosterone because you're getting an exogenously from a different, you know. Oh. So, but okay. but like back in the day when I was young, in the same exact age, like nineteen, twenty, right? Everyone was like, steroids are bad. Steroids are always bad, right? But then they'll go like, but pro hormones are lit. This is back in the day when yeah. I was young. Yeah. Now it's like steroids are bad, but SARMs, you could take those though. Uh -huh. And it's just another fucking racket to sell kids fucking basically steroids without scheme. calling them yeah. steroids. It's like fucking. And you got all these kids talking about it now on the internet and they're taking it younger and younger. It's it's actually fucking crazy. What you yeah. think of stem cells? Stem cells are fucking amazing. Where'd you get them? Where do you get them? Panama, they got really we good ones. We need them ones. cheaper. We're paying too much know, out they're, here. They're, they're, Panama. But How it's, much are they for stem cells? How's it worth? Well, we uh, had to get it, it from a... a, a so I want to get my dad on stem cells. It's called Day Zero Cells. So what we what we did was we got um, this woman that gave birth that was donating her umbilical cord to stem cells so they could like ex extract the stem cells from that. So Day Zero Cells. This woman just had the baby. They cut the umbilical cord, get the stem cells, and they helicopter lift it to the place so it's like super expensive here. Here it's crazy fucking expensive. Yeah. The crazy thing about all this stuff, like stem cells and all these things, they don't have to be that expensive. It's just like because they know that the, we can make the margins stupid fucking high. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, we're not going to make these things readily accessible for like people that we can just be like, you got to take this pill and that pill and take this hormone and take that. It's like yeah. these things are actually really fixing people. But it's like a do lot know, of people are you know about stem cells yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they, they could questions. potentially, like, some of these things could cure, uh, like, spinal cord injuries. Yeah, bro, and stuff. tons of fucking issues. But it's, but it's just like, of course, we're not going to, like, they're not going to push it out there and be like, yo, these things are really good for people. And and it could be cost effective because, you know, why well, they could just hike the cost up on this shit. What's the price of stem cells in Panama, then? Do you know about it, it depends. Depends how much you buy. I'll, it's I'll pretty expensive. How much you need, though? <laughs> How do you even know if they're honestly? I don't, I didn't feel any different after I got them, so maybe really? they just shot me with you know they could have the shot thing. me with water. At Panama, fucking who knows what they're shooting you with? Well, yeah, they, they got the real shit down there. Well, yeah. that's yeah, that's the the thing is it's not as I didn't like, see an umbilical cord. I didn't see a baby. You didn't you know, see. The cells. I just saw a little jar of things that's getting put in through. You didn't notice anything. I don't know. I kind of always like. I'm always doing the same consistent workouts and stuff. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Damn, you got to pay attention to that I shit. Drink a Celsius. <laughs> fucking feel <laughs> <You're wired>. fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's so different. It's like yeah. so different. I yeah. I don't pay attention to that you stuff. You have to go just, to stem cells. Not yet. No, I've got. I got a stem cell facial, which was fucking amazing. Oh damn. Yeah, what are that you was. Getting done though? What are you gonna get done with? The, what are you gonna do? I, I want to put them in my shoulder because my shoulder's been. Bad shoulders. Yeah, it's been. My fucked. dad's got bad knees. I'm It'll fix that shit. You think so? Yeah. Fuck but he's yeah. overweight. He's heavy. Mm. So, so that's the thing, right? It's like the you fuck? fix it to then just get fucked up again because you don't fix the actual issue that's causing it. Is yeah. the overweight, he's you know? Overweight. Yeah, he's heavy. So he's it's like you got to fix that first. Though. What's that? He's got a bad heart and all that shit. Uh, do you think that'd be not good to do or what? Obviously, right. I mean, I'm not. Help it. Who knows? Yeah. Wait, we're, we don't want to be like Joe Rogan. Like, yeah, I'm not a doctor. Not, I can't not, say not, this is exactly crazy it. times we're living in. You're up to date with this shit, aren't you? you yeah, I mean, the, the, the bigger issue is like, if he's got a bad heart and he's overweight, it sounds like he needs to lose weight. No, yeah, he needs to lose weight, but he fucking won't do it. Well, okay. I mean, that's a whole nother because issue. His knees are Bro, we're spreading right. tons of misinformation. No, this is getting pulled down. <laughs> we are getting love it. <laughs> no, this is not misinformation at all. The truth is, the guy's overweight. He's got bad knees. They're Our both eyes been hand. open yeah. this whole time. We're getting pulled down. That's it. This is going Censorship down like the ship online. Like What's the Trump going podcast. On the Trump what podcast. Think? What do, what do I think it? about yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fucking crazy. But I also think at some point, like, I don't know. It's like. Is it ever a good thing? Is it ever a bad thing? I don't know. Maybe it'll just go so far in one direction that everything is just going to turn the other way and we're just going to guns blaze and say whatever we want and then fuck it, you know? Yeah. I think I was, I was, I had Mike on the podcast. I think the bigger problem is like, like we were talking, people have no compassion for each other. Like the other side. Yeah. You know, if you say this and you believe this, okay, but like mm -hmm. this is where I stand. Here's why. Yeah. It's just like an attack. It's like you believe that something that's opposite of what I believe. And we're just enemies like that's mm -hmm. that's the bigger problem, I think. Yeah, I don't think like things, sh you know, I think things shouldn't be just like completely removed or dismissed because then it, you start to like run this whole agenda in a different direction. Mm -hmm. People just need to go outside and touch grass, you yeah, know, and fucking fight Be a little more open minded. Put some gloves you know? on. I don't care what religion you are. It's, you yeah. know, we all want to believe there's a God. Why, why I don't care which what you call yours. What's that? Why did it get canceled? Which one? The the the, the Trump one. 
I mean, uh, there's, uh, I guess I was talking to Bob about it. They're just saying because he's what was it? Natalie, he spoke about something specifically that they um, they couldn't for a certain the election say. fraud thing. Like yeah, just like the about there was something about the election fraud. Like that he said it was something about Don't it. Don't get yours taken down. I know. So know? we all like cut that Did bitch. You, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but the compassion. I'm saying like the bigger issue in like this whole censorship thing is like people just being able to understand the other side. Being able to listen to a different point of, point of view. You know, like you obviously grew up somewhere, lived a whole different life than I lived. And for me to be like, hey, this is how I feel, this is what I think, and you should agree with me, or like justice you're an enemy. Justice for the 97. Fuck, you know? Justice, what you say. <laughs> Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. You gotta watch Patty the Batty. What do you think of him, Liam? You support your fellow scouts. Do you think he's, you think he's gonna be? Do you think he's gonna be nah, bigger than Connor? I don't think he's gonna be a superstar. No. I don't. Nah, I mean, I don't know too much about the shit, you know. I saw well, a leaked video. I, I, asked people, I saw a leaked video of him fighting in high school, and he had the same. He fought the same exact way. Like he got dropped in the bathroom, got back up, dropped the kid. Patty. And he had the same hair. Yeah, and he says it's not Liverpool, but it's like it's clearly I, Patty. I don't think it is. But it was anyway, on Twitter. I it had mean, like I, fifty thousand retweets. I mean, I don't think he's a. Uh, we'll see. I mean, he's doing a great thing. How would you know yeah. if someone's if you see someone? How would you know they could be a superstar or not? Like, how would you judge that? I mean, you obviously you've been you've been fighting for a long time. You've know a lot you of fighters. You tell people it's special, and they, but you gotta have the discipline. And uh, I got a question though: Is it always in the fighting? Because obviously you have to be a great fighter to be a great fighter, right? Yeah. For but sure. like Connor became a superstar not just because he was a great fighter. He's a great promoter. Right. He's the best in the game. Yeah. You asked Floyd Mayweather, he's the best he worked with. He's say Conor McGregor. Like, when you made all this money, and you can still get up and do the shit. And train fucking hard. Exactly. Yeah. I used to think that about money, because I'm with these guys every day. I used to run with money every day in the Philippines at 6 a.m. in the morning. I used to wonder. I, I mean, I never had money at the time. I used to wonder, how the fuck this guy still do it? Rich as fuck, yeah. Money, Rich as fuck, I mean? but still fucking Miguel ferocious. Cotto, Every day, 5.30 in the morning, he'd be in the gym, training. 5.30. No matter what. Yeah, he was one of them guys, you know what I mean? Floyd's a, a night guy, I think, I'm, t I'm told, or whatever. He, runs, he goes to strip he clubs, doesn't he, drink, and yeah. then he'll go run seven miles I'm after. He trains when he wants to train, but I mean, he trains hard. Yeah. And that's the key to it. I mean, discipline. Train, you got to train hard. What do you think happened to Connor? Because Connor got all the money. Do you think, think it fucked him? He fucks around with He's the other also, shits, I'm told. You know what I mean? I mean I've I'm heard about this shit, that too. Shit, you know, I don't know. I don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? But, like, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to be on the internet saying that he's on the other No, shit, I heard you know he did some mean? shit, too. It's also but, like, I mean, you, I've seen you know, him. Think I've about seen it. videos of it, and it put me off him, to be honest. Because I, I don't agree with fighters doing that shit. You know right. what I mean? Like, Floyd Mayweather never had a drink in his life. Never if you're gonna be up there with the elite in the world, like yeah, a lot of these people, got, look at look at now the the uh, lightweight champ Charles Oliveira. He barely yeah. even speaks English, and he's just fully dedicated to waking well, up, training two three times a day. Could be training oh, two yeah. times a day. Guys doesn't doesn't the guy who's 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 done until with what's the guy's name? Um, Hamza. You know he's these guys don't drink way, nothing. You know like I mean? they've never had alcohol. They're just fucking. All they care about is training. You know Connor's running multiple businesses. He's doing a whole bunch of different shit, you know, like talent to get you so, so you work out and then run your fun. podcast, do your other businesses, the merch, the everything you're working on. It's tough. To yeah. Well, I mean, that's exactly why I told you, like when we talked about my goals earlier, like why I had to be like, all right, I got to shift this focus completely and only focus on this. It's either you're going to be obsessed with one craft. Yeah. If you want to be an elite athlete, you got to be obsessed with that yeah, sport absolutely. and that's yeah. it. Like an MMA is you got to do all these so well rounded you things. Do in life, you got to be disciplined to yeah. it. But for us, it, you have to be a jack of all trades. It's different. It's Which two completely so different crazy. things. It's so crazy. I battle with myself with this shit all the time, man, where I'm like, fuck, what am I doing? Like, did I, did I miss on certain opportunities, like, at my craft? Like, could I have gotten stronger? You know, could I have been better? And did I, like, am I missing that because I'm also focused on all this other shit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I told you, this shit didn't exist. I was just doing it, and I loved it. And I, and I really fell in love with, like, getting stronger and getting bigger and, like, being, like, the best version of myself with – at the time, what I thought I wanted to be. And then I got pulled away. I really did get pulled away into like, oh, I can like keep doing this content stuff. Yeah. And it changed a little bit. Like I, part of me is like, damn, could I have gone a little bit harder? I genuinely yeah. question that in myself. Mm -hmm. And it's a mix of a lot of weird things. Like you're a fashion designer. You're a power lifter. You're a fucking dietitian. You know, yeah. like you, you're doing so many other things. Diets from you? 
podcaster. So to. now you're an interviewer. You got to yeah. do research. You're basically a, a journalist. You know, like it's so many different fucking weird things that yeah. it, they're like. Oh, oh, the only person I could see that does it like at the best is Joe Rogan because he's done all this MMA like training, fighting, yeah. knows and so I mean, much Joe's about it. Goal, Commentates bro. at UFC, does comedy, stand up, sells out arenas, and then he has the biggest podcast in the world. So like. Three completely different things. And he but trains he like a, a madman. And he's a crazy at it. Yeah. So I guess you just got to find a way to balance all those. And that's so the, the key is part. to try to be Joe Rogan. That's it. Get the yeah. tattoos. Get the fucking. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. That's shave it. Shave the head. Yeah. Fucking you're figured closer it out. than I am, bro. Dude, I think I'm way so. up. I got to get better at the kicks, though, I think. What? Sneaker kick. game? No, the, no oh. not get kicks. Oh, okay. Yeah, kicks. He's good with the kicks. You know, the spinning back kick. I mean, bro, we did it. We, been doing it for two three days and we're fucking already look like Israel out of three Sonya. days. You said yeah. three days like you're over here like him. Yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. Who's your favorite fighter in the UFC right now? Um favorite fighter. I like Hamzad a lot. I like uh who who else is I mean, I do like Charles Oliveira a lot. Um Do you think Connor's gonna be able to come back? I don't know, that leg breaks nasty. My sister had it. I same hope he shit. Can come back. And I do too because he's so fucking entertaining. Just, for the game. I, so I would love to. I was we were at the fight when he broke his fight. leg. My night was ruined. Oh, I went to the blackjack table and started putting thousands on. I was just like self destructing. I was yeah. such a big fan, you know. Yeah, because yeah. that one hurt. Seeing that one hurt because you're like that, fuck. That's such a long recovery, and to, for him, the movement and everything, it's like, is that going to come back? You know, knowing that you have a rod in that no leg, what? are you still going to use that leg? Like yeah. you're like you used to. Like he yeah. says, I got a titanium shin. But it's not that you got a fucking piece of metal that you got a yeah, foreign your object gonna be in, your, in your body. I think a lot of people know his game. I mean, he seems to blow up in the fights, and he kind of. I think he seems to get tired. Yeah. So I think if you, I mean, I, I'm guessing. So if you hold him in there for a minute, that's where he gets to him. And yeah. you know, just lean on. Because he's trying to come back tired. and fight uh, Kamar <laughs> Usman, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Respect for his, the confidence in him. Yeah, he's he's he's, 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 he's is kind of small I mean, for. I met I mean, like years ago, and when I met him, he had a, knee, a leg problem back, a knee problem. This is probably eight nine years ago. I was with George St. Pierre at the time, and Conor McGregor was before he made it. Yeah, he had, an, he had something wrong with his leg back then. Oh, shit, you know? yeah. You were a GSP at the time. Yeah, that's fucking dope. Yeah. Wait, why? Why do you know all these people? I'm so curious now. The, yeah, like you were just in the fight the, game. Just like, the gyms. Yeah. Wild Card was a very well, popular gym. I used to train with us. I used to go out with George. He's a good friend of mine. Fucking goat yeah. fighter. Holy shit. He. We went to the. PI in Vegas, the UFC PI. Yeah. And his fingerprint were Liam's fingerprint were I was meeting some. I work with Dana White for a minute. You know? I love Dana. Dana's the yeah. best fucking in the game, dope the best yeah, he kills in the game. it. Yeah. Thank God for you know his, him keeping going, putting out some sports, some fresh Dang. entertainment throughout the pandemic. Because I was like just in bed recovering and that, I was just obsessed. I became obsessed with UFC throughout that time. Would you ever do UFC? Like, would you ever fight like that if we're talking about? I know I keep talking about this. I mean, I'm not if it's like a, a guy that's like, I'm not going to go against. I'm not a UFC it. guy, but like if it was like an influencer maybe. instead of boxing, right? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I mean, I, don't I, care. I've sparred with MMA guys and they toss me around like a rag doll, but whatever, you yeah. know. It's, do you do any BJJ or anything like that? Wrestling? I'll fuck around with it, but I, I just from like, you know, I'm not even a white belt. You know, I just watch YouTube videos. <laughs> 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 I love it, man. It's ah, all, yeah, it. I'm just sick in the head, you know. So I got a question about your podcast. Number one, how long have you been doing it? And like, we just hit 42 episodes of 42 weeks, almost a year. 42 weeks, almost, a, almost. A week. So, what is your focus on it when you're doing your podcast? Um, just kind of because, well, like, I, I had the eye injury, so it was difficult to do the haircuts all the time, and also booking guests is it's become more of a problem especially this like emerging collaborating like everybody has a show and everybody's competing for the top tier guests like you got nell going after trump and then they just have yeah. one after another like a list celeb you have yeah. impulsive pulling huge guests and i was kind of no i'm not one of the first people but to make like a youtube show that's cut down of an interview that's has like visual aspects of it i was one of the first people to do that on youtube with the barbershop show yeah and um i remember they just, came on yours uh, like a while ago like who did nelk oh yeah yeah they, they all yeah. came on together yeah. and yeah it was a lot of fun to do that but that requires timing to have it's already hard enough to get people on a podcast without like a haircut involved people right. need to have a haircut people need to trust you to cut their hair they know that my jokes are going to be a little backhanded some people can't take it always yeah. and it's not the right fit for them um but yeah, it just I 
needed something different because I my eye got fucked up. My vision was a little doubled, and cutting hair wasn't as easy. Now it's better, and I I, I could do it again. But yeah, I just wanted to do something where I could sit down, have a conversation, not have to worry about all these moving parts. And also, we changed the airstream, so just two different shows. I wanted to try podcasting. I feel like it's the future. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, podcasting is hands down. My, like I say this, I must say this like fucking ten different times on ten different episodes. Is is my most favorite type of content because yeah. I've been doing this other content for so long, like workout shit, which obviously I enjoy and I keep doing, and you know the comedy shit or fuck around prank shit. But like this is always the stuff that whenever someone comes up to me or sends me a message, or like yo, the thing you said on the podcast, I I appreciate it so much. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. this is the kind of content that I think just resonates with more people. Yeah, even absolutely. though it's not always absolutely. the biggest audience. Cause like it's you know they speaking. gotta watch a two hour thing exactly. But yeah. I, I just think it's the most valuable platform. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And the audience, there's no better audience to have than a podcast audience because they really know you. Like a TikTok audience, you could get two million followers in a week, or yeah. you could you know blow up, and then it's like they don't even know who the fuck they're watching because they've only seen you dance. And you know it's yeah, like, yeah shake your fucking <laughs> or whatever is it is. So even crazy, con- there's man. funny comedians on. TikTok too, but you only get them for 30 seconds or whatever. So yeah, yeah there's nothing. Where, better where than do you think social audience. media is going to go now? Cause it's like everything besides podcasts, right? It, which is so interesting because in, it seems like in the age of like less and less and less, uh, attention span and like quicker, everything like TikTok, more shit, yeah. just scroll podcasts are starting to like do this though. Yeah. 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 That's another reason why I wanted to make my, my podcast a little different. It's a little weirder. It's a little like different style, a lot of sound bites and like weird. I mean, it kind of makes you feel like you're on an acid trip when you're watching it. But um, yeah, I saw a, I saw a thing you post on your Instagram. You know, something with the their voice was all fucking weird or something. Yeah, shit. I just do weird shit. I just have fun with it. I think it's important to stay having fun with this stuff, you know, yeah. and otherwise it feels like work and you could see that it's obvious. Like uh, the other day, my cameraman, one of my one of my guys, he's like, right now, I know you're fucked in the head and you're going through a lot. Like, do you feel like you have to make videos or you want to make videos? It's an important question. Yeah, it's a good question from him. Like a young kid that's like, you know, he spends a lot of time with me. He picked up on this and like there are days where I feel like I really want to. There's nothing I want to do more than just like there's days where I'm craving doing a live show and like having a fucking audience and seeing so many people. And there's days where I don't feel like doing shit. It's just, yeah. you know, but that's life. It all depends. Yeah. No matter what you're doing, whether it be a podcast or fucking working a nine to five or whatever the fuck like that's yeah. a part of life, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's relevant as fuck for people to understand that because I think a lot of people look at this stuff and they tend to be like, oh, man, if I was doing that, like I'd be happy or like I'd, everything would be solved. And, but it's like, yeah, it's just like grass is always greener type vibe. Like it's it's not always exactly what you think. Yes, I'm super fucking grateful that I'm able to sit here and like this is this could be a living for me. At the same time, there are definitely days where I'm like, fuck, like I suck or I can't think of shit or I don't know what to film or like, yeah. what am I going to do next? And it's crazy because I just I just remember like. I've said this before on a podcast, but I'll say it again. I remember when I was young, like 12 years old, and I'd look at like 33 year olds, me now, right? Yeah. And be like, yo, they got it figured out. And then you realize like, I'm 33. And they're old like, as fuck. Yeah, they're and old then, as fuck. And, and now I'm 33, it. and I'm like, I don't feel old at all, but I'm yeah. like, fuck, I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, like, but I'm sure you've done a lot more than you ex- expected. You know, like I at least so. I have. I, 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 did, so. I didn't really, I kind of had a feeling I would do something. Like I, we all moved out. Did you grow up here? I, yeah, I'm from San Francisco. I didn't okay, grow up here, so, so I moved down here. So you took a risk? Of course, yeah. yeah and no, you chased it? You wanted more out of your life? Yeah, I, so I moved to Sacramento State for one year uh, right out of high school. And then I was like, Sacramento sucks. Mm-hmm. This was like forever ago now. I still think it kind of sucks. But sorry, Sacramento. Um, and then I ca- came back home, went to community college, and then put all my shit in like a, a truck, a little uh, Ford Ranger I had at the time, and drove down to uh, Cal State Fullerton because I was like going to get a business degree. But drove all the way well, to Southern California. You probably had your head sticking out of the sunroof and your arms yeah. outside of the car driving that oh thing. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> I barely fit in that bitch. Yeah, I saw and your Raptor outside. It's a fucking yeah, giant truck. I love that. So I, I drove and I if met. If I had a picture of you as a car, it would be that. The Raptor? The Raptor, yeah. yeah. Either that or like a Hummer. Like the or old like that one, fucking, H3, what's that? What's H2, that? H2, H1. What's that truck that they sold that was like, it was a Transformer. It was fucking way more diesel. It was a truck. The that Avalanche? Truck. No, it was like a bigger <laughs> truck that like you don't really buy. Like people don't really buy them. I don't even know. They're like but almost like be, a semi that's truck. The one you'd be. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But I'd be fucking fast, like a fucking, like a Tesla. Like yeah, turbo charger. Throw some fucking. Tr- but yeah, I I, uh, I drove down like la- randomly met a family on Craigslist and just like drove down and lived in their house. Oh yeah, <laughs> damn. 
And I was just like, because I always felt like I just wanted something different. Because when I lived at home, I was like, oh, all these people are doing the same thing. Bro, shit. you're a risk taker. Yeah. You know? I Fuck love it. What risk. do you got to lose? I, fucking, I mean, you could lose everything. But you could also gain everything. Yeah. And that's what I realized. Like, and I, my whole life, I, I just keep trying to do that, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make more. Gains. Exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. I've just gotten good at the physical ones. And I, and, you know, some of the. Some of the non-physical ones as well. but Yeah, cha-ching. Have you ever taken mushrooms? Yeah, I've taken mushrooms. Have you ever taken a lot? Um, No, I'm like, bro, don't look at me like this, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, why are you judging? <laughs> why are you judging like that? He's like. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm never really one to, like, get too crazy on drugs. You never took, like, a, weed, like, a... like, edibles I hate. Yeah. I hate edibles. I freak the fuck You've out. You've never taken mushrooms? I've never taken anything. Ever? I've never... Done a I've drug. Never, I've never had wow. Really? Holy shit. Brad, That's you said that like maybe 20 minutes. Yeah, but, but, so but hold on. But I guess it that. passed my mind. Like never. Never. Like not even like cheers, like uh, happy oh. birthday. Um, That's fucking dope. I don't touch alcohol smoke, either. I yeah. I got to stop. Do you smoke? Yeah, you, Every you once seem in a while. like you got your life wow, together. A I had I had an alcohol no, problem. Never cigarettes. Wow. Cigarettes are fucking terrible. A yeah, waste marijuana. of time. Cigarettes are the worst thing in the world I just want to make that Coconut known Coconut yeah. okay Yeah There's a, a point for it That's where you come up With your judge I love how he just lo His low judge key judge yeah. I love it That's what he did to Tyson And it worked I it. I'm not it. Listen I'm like I, I've i done it I go in phases Where like I'll do it for like a month And I won't do it at all My I won't do it for Smoking smoking right Yeah So smoking a cigarette Isn't different to smoking They give you different oh, sensations wow. You know we Cigarettes are just I mean, for what's you. inside it is completely different, though. But people mix cigarette, cigarettes and weed to a joint and everything. Yeah, like a spliff. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, that's those different. Are, those are nice. I used to love those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When'd you stop? When'd you stop? When'd you stop? No, I still smoke a little weed. Okay. Um, I need something, bro. Yeah. You know, I need some sort of disconnect, especially with all this shit that we do. Yeah. But I stopped booze three, I saw maybe four years ago. I don't know. I, even have like, I don't remember the day exactly, but I just went like, I'm about to turn 30 soon. I don't have a property. I don't like, I'm not where I want to be. And then I just quit that and I became so much more productive for about a year. And then like that kind of like that feeling so fresh and sharp kind of just blends into normal reality. Like you become yeah. like everybody else, but I just love not feeling any hangovers ever and just always being sharp, always in the same like level, so the same state of mind. Yeah, being in control. No, I get it completely. I'm not against drugs, by the way. I mean, no, I no, it's fine. Fuck if you take drugs, I, yeah. I just seen it ruin lives. Do you know what I mean? So I don't agree. Absolutely. With That's why I never took them. To be fair, when I was growing up, my father abused drugs, and then he took his life when I was very young, and I related drugs directly to him taking his life. And as I was young, for sure, I was like, so imagine the kid who's like. 15 12 and you know your friends are like smoke or drink or do this shit like little kids kind of get into when they're young and i was so against it because i was relating it directly to like oh this is a part of this is a part of my dad taking his life my dad used to point out to me look at these yeah look at waiting to go into the pub for a pint at eight o'clock in the morning yeah so i i related it exactly i was relating like doing that stuff taking the drugs or drinking to like oh i'd be like my father so Probably my, like literally my whole life until I was maybe like the first time I ever smoked weed. I think I was like, dude, like, I don't know, 23 or something like that. My thing is though, why start at 23? <clears throat> yeah, it was so, so that's a good question. It was, it, it was in the circle that I was at the friend circle that I was with and the, the, the people that I was around, they weren't like, yo, you got to do this. This is good. Like, you know, um, like peer pressure. It was more like. Because I always had, I always surrounded myself with smarter people. At least at the, I was always trying to surround myself with people that were smarter than me. And the person was like, yo, it can help you with X, Y, Z, right? Not not like this is going to fix it, but there were things that it could help me with. So I was like, oh, I'll try it. And then I was always still the person when I first smoked okay. weed. I was like a time, like I was like a, like a fake a, hit. Yeah. yeah, like for sure. For the first two years of fake <clears throat> hits, complete fake I, hit. People who know me. No, not to ask me to be yeah. on drugs. Well, if someone asks me to be on a drug who knows me, I'd fucking give them a slap. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know I mean? No, I get it. I get it. I, I I'm a big shit. believer in everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And I know I'm, I, you know, I'm so sorry about your father, and I'm so sorry about my um, 
my one of my guys making that oh, stupid it comment. Matter. But I mean, look at you now. Look at what you've done with your life, and if you can take that situation, that negative situation that that like haunted you, and you turn it into a positive. Look at what you made of yourself. I'm sure your father's looking down at you, and he's proud. You're fucking jacked. You're rich. You're famous. <laughs> you know. Sure. You're fucking doing everything. You live. You're living out your dreams. You took that risk, and you went to that next state. Lived in that house that you were those random people. Yeah. You did all this, and you know. Like, of course, it's got to be proud of you. And, and you know, uh, I've, I've lost a lot of friends to drugs and it's not their fault. You know, it's just people are really like when you when you're an addict, you just you're a fucking addict. There's nothing you could do. Yeah. You need yeah, the right yeah. people around to really guide you. And some people don't even tell people. So a lot of times like guys like us won't even voice our feelings and let people know I'm an addict. Like for me to realize I had an alcohol problem and then come out and say it, it was like. I'm like embarrassed to say this, but once you say it, it's like, who gives a fuck, you know? Yeah. I'm just, you know, I admit it, and then I, then people can help you out, and you get the right people that guide you in life. Sure. But yeah. Do I think you I find so. Much? What's that? Do you booze much? Do you drink much? No. Once a week, he said. Once no, a week. Not even once a week. Sometimes it's never. Yeah, so like, you can handle I mean, you're not a guy. See, me, I think drugs lead to other drugs, like alcohol leads to smoking, yeah. smoking leads to this. This leads to this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like a smoker, it's like a, a like a high school Lisa. health teacher. No, I you will it. die and get AIDS yeah. if you smoke cigarettes just once. Yo, just I mean, they're all shitty <laughs> habits. <laughs> no, but I get you though. I, That's I, my way of looking at it. You know? It's not regular for me. It's like every once no, in a while. Uh, yeah, you're a social thing. Yeah, nah, kind of I mean, it's like is. even that. It's like if I'm filming a video or I'm fucking around with Steve or I'm like going out and they're like, "Yo, shotgun this." I may be like, but I'm not like, "Give me more shots, let's drink." I'm not that guy. I've never been that guy. Never, man. Fuck that. Yeah. And it's funny, though, what you said about, uh, you know, uh, I was thinking about my dad. You were talking about, like, people taking their lives due to drugs and shit like that. You know, one of the most interesting things that I found out about my father. It's not always intentional that you meant to take your life. Well, this is crazy. This is this is exactly what I'm talking about. My dad was completely sober when he took his life. My dad suffered from clinical depression, like severe yeah, depression. That yeah, that happens, right? Depression. So they, you know, they do the toxicology test. And I didn't know this till years later. My mom ended up telling me. She didn't tell me, obviously, like years time afterwards. I think she told me this like two years ago. Mm -hmm. She was like, she, she was telling me how like, you know, when they, when they, when he took his life, he was literally stone cold sober. So he made a very conscious decision that like, this is what he was going to do. And it was, I, I know that it was more strongly related to like his level of depression. Like I know that he was clinically depressed. That's another thing that's out of your control. Yeah. It just, it happens. And I, I've experienced a lot of that like post accident. Cause I, I, I smashed in my frontal lobe and that's the part of your brain that creates happiness. So I've been like trying to find other ways to heal my brain to do a hyperbaric chamber that gets more oxygen flow to your brain. Yeah. And yeah, depression's fucking real i used to make fun of it. i used to talk shit about like oh you got anxiety you're just fucking you know like stop complaining yeah and now i experience all of it and i wish i could take all that back but it is what it is that's life you know you grow and you learn yeah. and yeah there's that's another thing that you just you know you can't blame him for you just can't control it yeah. you know? so, what, what drugs was he into you don't want to he was doing like speed and stuff because he was a truck driver so he was like to stay awake to work long hours. Yeah. He would like, you know, you know, to drive trucks, he's taking like speed and shit like that. I don't know if he was taking meth or not. No, I know he that, got overweight. So he was only, he suffered with depression. That was the problem. Yeah, that, that was the main that problem. Was, that wasn't, yeah. he wasn't taking, he was taking drugs for work reasons, but yeah. probably right. And do it. He had, he had, he had a lot of things that were tied up with like his, his emotional <laughs> stress revolving around. Like I, I, I know this all after the fact, obviously, but um, he, his parents had recently <laughs> passed away. I think his I think his his dad had passed away and then the way that he treated his mom while like she was still around was like not very good like really bad actually and then she had passed away and I think he felt really you know yeah resentful and I think that's the thing that like drove him pretty pretty far down yeah it could also just be a chemically imbalanced thing you know yeah. where it's just he could you could fucking hit the lottery and thing still is, be fucked in the head the next day you've moved on and you're doing well for yourself. That's all yeah. that matters now. You know what I mean? And shit happens in life. You just got to get on with it and move on, right? Yeah. With what you're doing now for yourself. So. No, I'm grateful, man. I mean, you know? 
listen, like uh, even just be able to talk about this stuff to if there's some person out there listening that could be like, yo, this is like I appreciate this conversation. Oh, this is real shit. That's all it's this worth. Is real talk. Yeah. yeah. If this was me you know a few I mean? years ago before I went through everything I went through, like to see a, a big giant guy like you talk about mental health, talk about their problems and stuff. I'd be like, wow, you know, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just grateful, man. I'm grateful to be even here, like doing this with you guys. Like, I'm going to be honest. Raw like, talk's a big, it's going to be a big show, man. I appreciate it. I didn't man. expect this vibe. I, I I thought you were going to like, we would just have a push up contest or something the whole time. <laughs> but you know, this was nice. No, I no genuinely appreciate you, man. I've been wanting to make content with you for a while. Like I, I always think that I liked about you when I first saw you, like just your style of humor, like that, that like dry kind of sarcasm shit. I love it, man. Thank you. And yeah, when I first met you, New York barbershop style, we're very, we insult each it. other, but that's how you know your friends. And, and I know when, when, uh, when you get, when like you first saw me there and you're like, Oh, or, well, I guess it was the first time, but when you hit me, <laughs> I was like, I like this guy. <laughs> like when you were willing to do that and we yeah. just did it, like, we were like, fuck it. That was so cool to me. That was like the best bit. I was like, I loved it. Fuck it. You live once, you know? Yeah. And I get just like that kind of mentality. If I, you give me that opportunity to fuck in, of course, where, where of course, it? right in the stomach and the where, abs. Where, where, and, where, where? Uh, this was when I, right before the fight, oh, yeah. right before oh, I think yeah. Logan's fight. Was it Logan versus Mayweather? No, or no, no. This was, uh, this was Austin and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fight, yeah. 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 I went there, filmed bullshit. Did you bullshit. think was the best on that show? The best fighter? <laughs> I think he's looking for an answer right here. I think you're... <laughs> Vinny Hacker? I trained him. I know, oh, that's why know I that? said it. Yeah, he told me. No, I'm no, just no, fucking no. with you. But who did you think was the best? No. Okay, Vinny genuinely... Vinny was only 18, 19 or Vinny, something. Vinny looked great. Vinny but the looked guy, great. The guy... The only thing is that what people don't know, the guy he fought weighs in 13 pound overweight. What? He was 13 pounds over the the weight limit. So that guy if fought. they agreed to fight at 170, he showed up like 183 or something. Yeah, dude. Oh, Deji showed up heavier. Yeah. And and traditionally and, and, and traditionally you'll get like half their purse happened. or something, you know, but Yeah, that whole thing was fucked up though. Yeah. You know that. Well, like it shouldn't have happened. He knows a lot. Yeah. I don't yeah, know how much we can get into I legally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, that's a that's a whole thing. We'll talk too much about that. I, got I just find it, I, all I know is all I know about that whole thing was Austin hit me up. He's like, you should fight uh, Harry Jowsey. I was like, eh, I don't know, dude. He's and tall. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. Uh, I didn't want to do boxing, number one. I wanted yeah. to do fucking MMA. Yeah. And then when I hear the Let's stuff after. Let's put on an MMA event. That's what I'm I want to do. I'm down for that. That's what I want to do. And, and when, but obviously when I heard after the fact, it's like no one got paid still. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? They just didn't promote it. a shit it, job. Right? Yeah. I yeah, could but, see that happening before, to be honest. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but like to do it on that big of a scale and to just like fucking r basically rob everyone is like pretty crazy. I mean, because yeah. like I'm just imagine if I took that fight, I would drive up to that motherfucker's house and beat his fucking ass myself. I don't know, man. I don't know if it was in an intentional <laughs> robbery intentional, from the beginning. Man. I think he genuinely believed that in like in his own head he that was, was going to sell he that was, much. Sells this no, much. No, no, no. They fucked up on the promotion promotion and the way they sold they, it was way too overpriced it's easy to pirate you know like yeah. everybody yeah. had it for free it was anyway on youtube for free i got told i don't know about this that, listen i'm not in this world right people tell you are me, now yeah, yeah you, you are, are now. now you're right here buddy but i mean like i'm not like here to, <laughs> no that's exactly why you're you here are. no this is exactly <laughs> why you're here you know i mean you're here I'm to like, tell the fucking truth go ahead but uh you know they promoted the fight wrong yeah. everything was wrong I the no, day I know, the fight, I know, I know Austin. Heck, Austin yeah. thinks he's a much bigger personality or whatever celebrity than he he actually is. You yeah. know, like it didn't sell for a reason. Like those are numbers. That's data. You cannot deny that. Yeah. He even when I was talking to him about fight and I like got his number from Bryce and he was like, "Get a fight or get your cloud up." I was like, "Motherfucker, I'll fight you in the street. Meet me at Saddle Ranch or so meet me wherever. Right. We could do it here. I'm not. I'm not talking about money." And get my cloud up. You think I can't sell a fight with you? I'm on the phone with you right now trying to sell it. And he had different, uh, uh, different yeah, agenda. Yeah, you yeah, know? up here. Yeah, I've you always want got millions, that bro. We're YouTubers. You know, yeah. it's like playing a fucking one-on-one -on -one basketball game. You're fighting with 16 ounce gloves on. You yeah. know, nobody's dying. Nobody's getting their orbital smashed in by fucking yeah. Austin McBroom. You know, he, he it was a decent fight though. No, it was, was a good. He looked good. He looked good in watch it. it. You know that. Uh, left. You left? I left. We I left. saw that. Yeah. Was like, I go, I go, oh, I think I was next to you. We got kicked out. Like the cops were coming. Thrown out and then we bounced. Out? Yeah. They didn't even. Want, we were just there and they. I don't know. It was a weird thing. 
Noah got Noah Beck got kicked out of all people. Like, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Noah got, Beck, like the nicest guy but ever. He, got that's the problem. Out. You're too nice. I'm you know? Yeah. You and I though, we're like, fuck you, get I'm out of here. Don't, got the money, don't, 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 don't I'm filming why, this. Why video. are you speaking to me? And you were like, you were like, <laughs> Brad, don't worry about that. Film this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember I was filming on the fucking yeah, phone. Yeah, when a security guard comes up to you <laughs> and says something to you, and, I, and you say, why are you speaking to me? Yeah, hold on. That really fucks their head up. But They're then, like, when, but the then when the cops came, it to? started getting complicated. That, the cops yeah. did start coming. Yeah, but I, I'm able to hurdle those uh, gates, like the little oh. the, so the railings, whatever, to keep people in line. I could hurdle those easily. Yeah. So I just move around that way, and, and I kind of get out of yeah. those situations. I, I saw able, that. Yeah, I did get I out of there that. nicely. That so when, when am I coming on your podcast? You were on it, the last episode. but No, I, but like actually, though. Whenever you want. We could do it. I'm not, literally whenever you want. I Like I said earlier, I'm stressed trying to book guests because I do it all myself. I just bring people on who I want to talk to that week. Yeah. I was even considering hitting up my ex-girlfriend last week because I was like... That's how down bad you are right now. Well, no, I, I, I thought it would be an interesting thing. Like, I don't want to just do stuff just to do it. Like, there's so many interviews with so many of these influencers out. You know, for example, if I... Bryce Hall's a great guy. Yeah. But, and if I asked him to come on the podcast, he would show up. He's, right. you know, he's always been there for me. And I just like, he's been interviewed a million times. He does his own podcast. It's just, or that's, it might be a bad example because I don't know if he does his own podcast, but it's just like, I want to talk to people who I want to talk to. And that's the content I want to make. Right. I want to get excited for it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like the fight game, you know, if I'm going to bring somebody on. Otherwise, why fucking do it? If you're not passionate about it, you yeah. don't enjoy it. It's bullshit. Yeah. I've been asked all week uh, for the past month. I've been hit up every single day by 10 different podcasts, do my podcast, do my podcast. But it's like who I want to talk to you. I know I, I could enjoy a conversation with you, but I'm not trying to do a press tour about my accident and, you know, yeah. whatever else is going on. They're like, I don't want to just keep on talking about over and over again, which I end up doing. Yeah. Anyway, but so what's in the future for you besides the podcast stuff, besides the, uh, the product stuff, which I love by the way, thank you. What else are you trying to build? What else are you focused on? I want to grow this brand to be the biggest, not just men's grooming, just all around. Um, the I, brand I, is Jeff's barbershop. The brand is Jeff's barbershop, but we will do cosmetics and everything, skin care, body wash, hair, like shampoo, everything all around from beard oils. You to need to get me a brand deal? Because I was just talking about making beard oils like yesterday. We'll, we'll do God. it together. I got everything at the labs. I have the best people working on these products. Like I genuinely thought this would be my life thing. So when I do YouTube, I'm like, fuck it, whatever. If I get canceled, I mean, it would affect the brand because my name is on it. So I don't want right. to get canceled now, but this was always my life goal. My get rich plan was this, but also like being able to reach everybody all over the world. Like people want to work out with you. Yeah. They can't work out with you, but they could buy your, I'm sure you have something they could purchase to get a, a a sense of like what it would be like. Do you have pre-workouts out or something like that? Yeah. We work, I'm working, I'm working on, uh, start working out on the same stuff. Bradley's on. You could do your hair with the same stuff I use. We can't go around working out with training everybody and giving everyone haircuts is too many people in the world oh it's nice it is nice i right? need beard oil though for real i have some I, i'll send you a sample yeah i really need beard oil that's hey, like yeah. i, I, I use beard oil every day so right now i just have a bunch of samples and we're just waiting on packaging and trying but i'm big out. on like fancy hippie shit i have all of our you know stuff is, is yeah high-end <laughs> why do you think that's funny why like you? fancy hippie shit. Yeah, yeah, was, fancy, you know, like, hippie or fancy? I've been like, doing this both. before, like before I even started anything. I've had clothing lines that were successful. You ever see Savage? That's written like all. Yeah. So that was my yeah. brand initially, and then everybody knocked it off, and I get, I let it go. I was like, "Fuck this! I'll move on to something new." Really? Yeah. So I, I've fuck? been in the game, and that's before even Vine anything. Um, but yeah, I, just, I don't even know. I love this, dude. Hey, Thanks, I have a bro. random question for you guys, because Brad's afraid of dying, and then you had a near death. Oh, why you got to put me out there like that? No, Every, like, most if, people if are afraid of dying. I'm like see, very afraid. Though. I just want to yeah. see like what positive takeaway did you get, and like I don't know. Just well, when I when I started that skydiving school, I kind of overcame the fear of death. I did fear dying a lot, obviously. I'm sure a lot of people do, but I also feared heights. And then once you're jumping out of a plane over and over again, you kind of accept your faith, like. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen, you know? You could get fucking shot walking out of a restaurant. Like, you know, whatever. We're all going to die someday. See, my problem is I know that, but I still have the problem. Because I logically, I know that that's a fact. You get in a car, yeah. I get smacked. It still doesn't change the fact that I'm, like, fearful of death. Yeah. You know? I, well, it's inevitable, you know? Yeah. 
unless that's the only thing that's got me more comfortable with is it like i know i'm not escaping it yeah just make the best of it while you're here yeah. That's why I, I I wanted to go back and jump out again. You know, jump out of a fucking plane, even don't though jump I hated out of it. A plane. You you're said too don't. heavy anyway. You need to be under two twenty. I, yeah, I don't think the, the chute wouldn't time. hold you. You have to get like some industrial size chute. So I haven't done it. My mom's trying to get me to do it. I'm like, you trying to get me killed? Risk? The fuck? No, well, I mean, it's not that risk much risk. Your life? Listen, so that's what I'm saying. You're jumping out by yourself. You know, you don't have the instructor on after the second jump. But there is a thing in the parachute that if your first chute doesn't work and you pass out from fear. There's a thing that senses where you're at, your altitude, and when you get to 1,500 feet from the Earth, it'll shoot out the reserve I on its own. I trust that. A lot of people don't trust it, and those do uh, fuck up too. But there's a lot. Okay. And Stati- then you're dead. Statistically, it's um, uh, it's so much more dangerous to just be in a car on the street than skydive. I know it sounds nuts. I get it. I get it. The amount of training they put you through, safety courses, like you're like, I gotta do this shit again. Just get me up on the plane and fucking throw me out. You can put a sack of potatoes on it and it'll be fine with the thing. You're right. I mean, I do find it really interesting how like we rationalize like certain things that we do are okay, but are can be equally as like detrimental to our health. Like even just for example, our eating habits, like we don't think of them in the moment because it's like it's just, oh, I'm eating this burger or whatever, this unhealthy meal that's like going to kill you in fucking, you know, 50, 30. Who knows how bad you're eating? But people make that decision all the time. You, yeah. and we're like, oh, we're not, we're gonna avoid this, right? For example, you're saying like getting in a car, your chances of dying are like this high. Yeah. But, you know, people were so afraid about going out during the pandemic because of COVID. But your chance of dying of COVID is like this much compared to like you getting uh-huh. in a car and getting hit is like fucking this yeah. much. Yeah. I I do think it's funny how like, it it just depends, I guess, what information we're feeding ourselves in relationship to like that cause of, of in this case, death. Yeah, right, well, but, you want to put energy into that, it's inevitable, you know? Yeah. You can't control it. What you can do is you can work on your health, comb that beard, you know, keep yourself looking good, enjoying life. Get me beard oil. I'll, I'll and send I will you fucking promote Hey, yo, we got to do the questions. That's I, it. I know, I know. Okay, run the fuck. Okay, at the end of every episode, yeah. we do questions from, from the who? audience. Oh, are yeah. we live? Yeah, we're live. Seriously? They've been watching us this whole time. The Hell feds. yeah. All yeah, right. The feds. Have I canceled yet? What do you mean, farm? No, the feds. <laughs> oh, the feds are watching. Yeah, yeah, this whole time. So, like, the whole thing you were talking about, I'm a drug dealer, it was like, we got I've you. I already served my time. Yeah, we got them. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so askrawtalk at gmail.com. Get your questions answered by me and the guests, whoever's on the podcast. Go ahead, Natalie. Give us some questions. She All right, so it shit. says, hey, Brad and guests and the lovely lady reading this right now. Thank you guys for putting the energy you guys do into the world and your hard work. My question is, do you believe that there are people controlling our screens and any time oh, they could u- could be questioned, um, they just blame the algorithm and the use? Wait, whoa. This is a deep, 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 this is, hold on, this is some deep, deep conspiracy yeah, theory that was, shit. Yeah, it is. They were just like, do you believe that people are controlling our screens at any time? Ah, and then they blame it on the algorithm and use it as a cover up so no one knows. It's not that simple. Yeah, people are watching your shit, of course. Yeah. So careful what you jerk off to. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't cover even your, don't cover your don't web. Don't even watch cover porn. Your, what? Don't even watch porn. I actually stopped watching porn. Go off memory from experiences. That's I mean, not everyone could do that, dude. Some people, you know, maybe they don't have any experiences. Maybe they watched a movie or something in the past. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly. I'm trying I'm, to think of the I'm first thing the I jerked off to. What's the first thing you ever jerked off to? Well, I'm sure your age, what is it, like magazines? <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, I jerked off to a fucking picture. Oh, look, it's Mike Magello, actually. Yeah, 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 answer oh, that shit. Wow. Yo. Mike, what up? Mike. Well, we don't we don't have the, the proper technology over here to bring you on as like, you know, what we do at Jeff FM Studios. <laughs> but we got Bradley Martin here. What's good, baby? You're on another episode of Raw Talk. Again, the favorite guest. Are you guys seeing what happened at the Oscars? What happened? What happened? Oh, hold on. Uh, somebody right now. It, bro, my house is down the street. Did it blow up? Live Get the oh. fuck out of here. Fuck? I think they should have started yeah. swinging. All right, thanks for tuning in. We'll, we'll call you yeah. after we're done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, these. That's fake. That's fake, bro. That's fake. I swear their viewers, they, they just need views, man. Listen, I, we could end this. Oh, everybody needs You ratings, smack maybe. me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking do it, dude. Are we going to do another? Oh.
Oh, Let's go. Let's go right here. Wait, yeah. No, oh, you got to hit me harder, bro. Right, give Get that. Give me a fucking good one. All right. All right. Hold on. This. Talk about my wife. All right. All right. <laughs> Wait, you have a wife? Fucking smock? Oh, yeah. yeah here, here. Can I give you the smock? Dude, no. Oh, yeah. I like fucking it. No. Take my fucking. Yeah, so it was a. Uh, uh, so yeah, questions. <laughs> kind of look like similar, like kind of G.I. Jane-ish, that girl that you were with. Oh, my wife? Yeah, your wife. Okay. Yeah, just kind of similar to that. Nice woman, bro. Yeah. Good to meet you too, man. Oh. <laughs> I can't, I can't <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. That's exactly how fake it was. I swear it was fake. Was I don't fake. give a fuck. Fake. I, I'm not slapping anybody anymore, bro. Fuck All right, hold on. We this let's just do one more question. One more question. <laughs> you he always shit. says one more question, and then we end up doing like yeah, two, no, three go for it. We gotta interrupt. Him, but go but next time, it. smack the shit out of you. Okay, I'll come oh. over there and hit you with the palm, and I'll yeah, try you to gotta get... really hit. Okay, like like trying to knock me out. Jesus. So do I have to like fix all this and then do one clean cut of like? No, a no, no. Fuck it. Let's just get that question. Let's get a good um, question. This person said, "Do you think obesity is a choice?" By the way, I love the podcast. Oh fuck, it's a hard question. Uh no. Like I said earlier about addiction, you know, it's out of people's control if they're eating like that. But also, Liam has a very uh, unorthodox strategy with insulting people, and it gets them to work, lose weight. It's effective. So. Um, it could go either way. I know some people, it's out of their hands, and, yeah. and uh, you know. It's odd. Some people who, uh, I mean. For me to talk shit, I'm naturally skinny. My whole family's skinny, you know, except for my dad, because yeah. he drinks beers all day long. He's got a belly. Yeah. But, yeah, a lot of it's genetics. Some people, it's just so much harder to lose weight. Some people, just, feel, they feel an emptiness inside of them, and they just got to stuff their body just to yeah. do stuff. Maybe it's anxiety. No, maybe it's, it's whatever. depression. People suffer with depression, and that's why they eat, and... Yeah, no. some sort of filling, filling of something that's missing. Um, this is, a, I mean, this is like, are we just trying to depress everybody on this? Like, is that what we're doing with these questions? No, oh, someone asked. Shit, what if they're man, curious? I feel bad. Um, yeah, I, it's, get it can be. Get in the gym every day. Get mentally strong. Get yeah. on that track. I think it's a choice. I, I, I think it's a choice. And then also some people, it's not a choice for it, you know? Yeah. But no, it's fair. That's, that's exactly right. I mean, that's exactly how I answer it. Yeah. But like, here's the deal. If you're dealing with it, if you know somebody who's dealing with it, the most important part in getting out of that is like small steps. For like, sure. I, I, I disagree with that. I think it's going to be a full lifestyle change. But, uh, but here's my issue with it. Here's my issue with it. If, if you told someone who's completely overweight, out of shape, and you say change everything about your life, it's completely unsustainable to them. Yeah. I do agree over time, 100% it has to be a lifestyle change. But if I'm completely overweight and then I'm like, yo, you need to go to the gym. You need to drink enough water. You need to, you know, it's overwhelming. Yeah. So you need someone to be like, okay, don't worry about shit right now. Just go for walks just every sweat, night at eight o'clock. Get, get go in the sweat every day. Exactly. And then, minutes. and then two, and then a month be like, all right, now you're going for walks every night. Now don't worry about anything else. Keep doing the walks. Stop eating sugar. Yeah. And if, steps. if you, uh, if you ever feel like you're super hungry or you need a snack, just slam down a bottle of water. That does help. It yeah. does. Sugar a lot of the time, you're just sugar is the worst the fucking thing in the world. Sugar is the worst thing in the world, man. Like it is fucking destroying people. People don't even realize. Yeah. It. yeah. I'm not saying like sugar from fruit or for, or from like berries and shit like that, but like you eating processed sugar is the worst thing you it's can do for your brain. If you yeah, have too much of anything, it's not on the way But home. sugar is so bad. Get though. some Skittles. Yeah. At a gas that's station the kids. Seven Eleven. <laughs> like I'm gonna go buy some candy, sour patches. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I, I, Dude, trust me, I love sugar. I sour, love sour skittles. Patch. Oh, I'll tear my tongue up. I'll oh. fucking wake up the next day, can't talk. I, need, I have to take a day off from the podcast. Oh, it's so my good, tongue's man. all ripped it's up. It's so good. But but yeah, man, sugar is like the number one thing to cut out, and you'll fucking your whole life will change like w drastically, mentally, physically, everything. Yeah. So is as that, a, when you train, you need sugar now. Of course, yeah, but your body can convert pretty much anything into sugar you get you sugar from sugar. bananas you get yeah, sugar bananas from oranges but even you can get sugar your body can convert other macros into sugar right so it like your brain is the one thing in your body that absolutely needs sugar to function so if you have no sugar present like if you eat enough protein it's going to turn that into sugar for your brain to function properly it's called gluconeogenesis Bro, i can't believe will smith smacked chris rock like it's that fake, fake. yeah no, they, they want the views, bro. Look at it. Think about this. You know why it's fake? I'll tell you why I think it's fake. Who's one of the most popular people on social media? Who's a celebrity? Uh, Jake Paul, maybe. Who's a celebrity who's not a social media influencer? Um, a celebrity that's not a social media influencer. Uh, who's Kanye? Really, Con, who? The person who well, smacked Chris Rock is one of the most popular people who's a mainstream celebrity who's on social media. Yeah. 
They need views, bro. Yeah. Look fake as fuck. Like, fake. you think all those acts, like you said, like, you go up there, like, when you did the shit that got cut out, whatever the fuck, the, you, you, you had this, you had your act, you had your bit, you had your jokes planned, right? Oh, the roast, yeah. yeah exactly. You have that sub plan. You think the guy didn't have that plan? The whole, it's orchestrated. If he, if he slapped Chris Rock, Chris Rock's a small guy. He's way bigger than, if he slapped him, he'd drop him. Yeah, because he, he did like a little, he yeah. did like a little, like, he knows how to throw a punch. I yeah, think he's I right. I mean, if, he played Ali. He had to do he a lot of boxing. I think it's all for fucking views. Because, like, the Grammys, like, they've been getting destroyed. Like, they're I know, Grammys. I know. The this no, is all Nelk Boys gets more views than the exactly. Oscars. Exactly. <laughs> do they? I don't know. I don't want to fucking... They prob they no, probably... No, I actually possibly do. Possibly do, right? I think they 100% do. What's but anyways, what anyways, I think it's fake as shit. Do? What? The Nelk Boys, what did you say they do? Uh, Big content. Yeah. They Same do. shit we do. Just at a different level. And they, they slam they down those happy dads when they're doing it. What? I thought... I have only watched a little bit of them. Like, I don't, you know, I'm new to watching this shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. They ask terrible questions, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, that's fucking funny. Oh, okay, that's no, funny. no, no. He, he, so he doesn't watch anything, but I, w we put on, I think it was like a, they were interviewing an MMA fighter, and they were like, so Nganu, like, what, uh, what number is he, like, out of all of them, out of all the fighters? He's a heavyweight champion. You know, they're at, uh, they were asking Dana White. And they, oh. were, they were like, so what is he ranked? And the, and Dana's like, he's the champion. They're like, they're like, so what number is that at all? And I'm like, oh, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> he's the number <laughs> one, man. Yeah, he's he's number one heavyweight. He's the heaviest, the baddest, will beat up everybody in the world. Yeah. In else MMA. Else I watched a little bit. But I that's just like, you know, you're early in the game. They're young kids. Like yeah. you said, we're, we're, yeah, but they get the we're interviewers now. Right? Yeah, they got a very, very strong audience. Yeah, Dope audience. Saying. We were drug dealers and, and trainers, yeah. you know, and barbers. Yeah. And now we're, in, I guess Somebody I come well. more from an interview and background because I talk to the person when I'm cutting their hair. Yes. But still. You I know, was, I guess me too, in a sense of not cutting hair, but I was a trainer. You so talk I was to always your, talking. Yeah, you got to keep the conversation going. It makes sense. It's built into us. It's they true. were doing pranks and fucking now they're thrown into this. It will take time, but I, I believe that they will continue to grow and be yeah. successful and absolutely crush it absolutely you know? that shit was funny though that was really funny <laughs> i love that no i love shit like that do we have any more questions or that's it yeah i mean i have another question one more isn't okay go ahead it says have you ever helped a friend to get a job where you worked and regretted it no nope i've always no. been self-employed pretty yeah. much one yeah, time no. i uh I was working at a barbershop in Miami and, uh, Oh wait, I can, sh I, go ahead. I'll answer it after you. We go back way back. But, um, yeah, my, one of my buddies started work. Well, I, I met him through the shop. He's a Colombian guy. I love cocaine. He came in one time, did a little too much cocaine. They fired him. And I was like, you know what? If you're firing him, I fucking quit too. And of course I left with them. And then we had a full on brawl with the barbershop and everybody there. And then we're all fist fighting the street. Gun That's gets pulled dope. out. Miami, everybody part. has a gun. You know, they yeah. sell them in fucking gas stations and 7-Elevens. <laughs> you just go pick one up. No, <laughs> <laughs> Not true, by the way. <laughs> Pretty much the amount of guns you see in Florida. You know, came into the barbershop, thought everything was all good. Didn't end good. Yeah. But I have a, I have some friends that I've I, early, earlier on in my business career, I hired or like had to try to be a part of what I did. Mm -hmm. um, some lasted and some kind of work on other projects with me, but some like just not always the best idea so never did i get a friend a job somewhere else but i've had people work f for me and with me and it just created like resentment and like why don't i have these things and it just kind of was a bad situation so I, I don't know about i mean not not hiring your friends but i think the more important part is like like any good relationship lasting or working is like giving it more time and like allowing it to naturally kind of happen and not just try to like put someone in a place because you think like Maybe your perspective is like, oh, this is the this can work because like I think it could work more like does that person also feel like they're going to match you at the same place? Because I've had friends where like it didn't match at all. And then they were looking at me like, well, why don't I have what you have? And I'm like, it's it's a little different, you know, so, yeah, um, not trying to shit on anyone. But I know there's some them. people they, that I'd love to share. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you, man. Next, My time, man. next time I say hit me in the face, you fucking hit me. <laughs> I don't fucking, I mean. You're right. I need to fucking let's let's not, yeah. let's try to don't fucking Will off. Smith me or some shit like I'm no, Chris Rock. I, I don't want to do. I don't want to do. Yeah, slap. do it for such real. a good talk, bro. I, yeah, we'll save that for another a barbershop episode or something. Yeah.
That's great. How long will we record for? Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, subscribe to the fucking uh, YouTube channel. Let's go, baby. There you go. Oh, no, it's right here. We're live. This is how we're ending on YouTube. Yeah. Subscribe to the fucking channel. Um, Chef, I appreciate you so much. Thanks, you got to give me some beard oil. Just, yeah. That's, that's actually something I'm thinking about. therapy doing. session. I needed it. Yeah. Really okay, I see. I see what we got going on here. Yeah. But I do really need a good cut. I got you, bro. I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull the barbershop up right in front of the house. You can do it right here. Really? Yeah, he yeah. has it in the little trailer, don't you? Are you going to go to Coachella? Because I'm going to bring it there. I think I'll probably go there. Yeah, it's a good thing for us. It's a good thing. Line, a good up, thing. line up some Coachella. guests. You know, hey, you want to come on my podcast next week? Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to be running around doing that the whole time at Coachella. Subscribe to the fucking channel. I'm out of here every Tuesday, 11 a.m. Let's go, baby.